Pay attention! Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of the Pixelated Echoes. We are on, on uh, episode 6 now. Happy Easter, everybody. We, we had a bit of a break last week. We didn't want to cancel this one, uh, but we should have a, a great show today. People are already popping into the chat. And before we start, I, I just want to say... It was it was awesome to see people message our account when we were gone and be like, hey, where, where's the episode? You know, it's, it's Sunday. I'm ready. Uh, so that's cool to, to see even one one person do that, let alone uh, multiple people. So appreciate y'all. This is a brand new show. Uh, we're only on episode six, but we get a lot of people who, who watch it in the future. They're like, Ooh, they, you know, they check it out. So I really appreciate that. Um, and if we have like just five viewers, if me and Fuzzy were on a stage, saw five people in the audience that's awesome i know you know just having like five or, or, or <laughs> it, it really is uh appreciate so appreciate the support uh so let, let's open it up to our guests we, we have some special guests today as you've seen in the intro we have two new challengers here today well um entering the pixelated kingdom always like to open the show with what you guys are playing i just started playing evil west it's on game pass pretty solid so far nice, so nice. i've been i've been enjoying that uh i've been been watching uh x-men marathons with, with my uh fiance we're up to x-men 3 now uh so that should be a fun time like she's never watched x-men at all so she's like wow. discovering it at, and nice nice th there was like a meme i saw where, where uh was where, like someone's like watching um uh, like Harry Potter for the first time, and then the other person's like watching their reaction. That's that's, that's like me right now. <laughs> like, who's your favorite <laughs> character? Uh, she she's liking Rogue so far, uh, and she likes the cartoon Rogue. So I showed a little bit of the cartoon, and then she likes uh, Magneto and uh, some other characters she she's liking right now. But yeah, that's what I've been up to. Uh, so let, let's get into our guest. So, ladies and gentlemen, we we have in our midst the the master and, and the guardian of the play night library manager, right? <laughs> he, he's not just an IT info manager by day, but he's a gaming legend by night. His beard holds the secrets to the universe, right? And he just so happens mm. to host the Gaming Circle podcast. So please welcome our special guest, Kay Asante. How are you doing today and what are you playing with? Wow, that, that is an awesome intro. I shall, I shall like, like comb and oil my beard right? with respect because it holds the keys, sir. Thank you for having me. This is awesome. I, 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 I've, I've caught a couple episodes and I'm like, man, I, I was waiting for you to put it together. And, and man, as, as I suspected it would, it would have that beautiful artist and style and, yes. and, and you definitely, you hit it out the park. So it's, it's awesome to be here. Let's see. What have I been playing? Um, I play a few things here and there. Um, as, as you were saying, uh, I've been tinkering with the old, the old uh, uh, front end UIs and things, uh, but I will say uh, I'll give two, two, two of them right now. Uh, the big game that everybody's playing, Dragon's Dogma Two, been playing that as well, mm -hmm. enjoying myself. But for the pixelated am among you, I've been playing a game called Pepper Grinder. I don't know if you guys have ah. I've heard of Pepper Grinder. Mm, no. It is, it is a very interesting indie style kind of game, pixelated game, pixel, pixel art style game. And it's literally, if you remember Ori and the Will of the Wisps, the, towards the end of Will of the Wisps, when you, you know, if you played Ori, you get a lot of powers, you get this feature, that feature. And towards the end, you're able to then burrow through the earth and use that burrowing skill to get everywhere. That mechanic, the game. You know, oh, or, or, okay. or we made it a hot song. They made it a hot, uh, they made a whole album out of the thing. And like it is, <laughs> they, they take that mechanic to its fullest capacity and it's really fun, locomotion. You know, they find very tricky and interesting ways to keep it fun. Really cheap, small game, like endless replayability. I've been really, really enjoying myself. So I've been playing that. Um, I will say, since you said that you've been replaying, you've been rewatching X Men. Yep. I too have been rewatching X Men, ah. but I've been rewatching X Men, the the animated series with the kiddos. Nice. Uh, so, so my son is is into the X Men. We, it's odd. He's into the X Men, so we were watching X Men 
to get ready for 95 uh, 97 i've been watching 97 on my own and didn't mm -hmm. tell him that but i'm watching the old stories to, to catch up and like my the daughter, old cartoons or the uh, yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Okay, i have, I have okay. the whole box set I, I, like that's hey. the only dvds i still have like like i love yep. that show i, I always have every time that that music comes on a tear drops yeah. down oh, I love it. Yeah. it's it's amazing Iconic. it's oh. amazing it is amazing and the new show oh my god it's better than the, than the first yeah. and that's not gonna something. lie i'm not gonna lie that's saying something and then with my daughter she she's very much into art she loves to draw and her new kick is drawing Dragon Ball Z. So we've been rewatching all of Dragon Ball. Okay. So there you go. Like you, like you said, like three bit where, where, where I, I love rewatching those things through their eyes. People who haven't seen it, the mm -hmm. joy kind of, it, it's, it's awesome. So that, that's what I've been doing for the week. I've been playing pixelated games and replaying and rewatching old nostalgic titles. So that's what, that's my, my, my thing. Heck yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, it's so, I don't know. It, it, it does. You get some like sense of dopamine or i don't know what it is like when, when someone else is watching something you love <laughs> yeah. and you're just like that it's like... And, and i gotta tell you my son is literally mini me light-skinned mini me so watching him watch this show is like me being 10 years old watching myself and it's just it is like a time capsule it's amazing it's very emotional for me i don't know it's, yeah, it's awesome yeah. it's so cool so cool that you're watching it uh as well so i i can't forget this this man uh i, I want everyone to get their their bomb suits ready right because we have <laughs> the bomb within our presence this seasoned explosive man has navigated over 300 episodes of his show the mm -hmm. shop podcast he has a love for sci-fi that rivals the stars themselves and has a great taste in trying out new games like diablo a good one uh, <laughs> so grab your detonators and prepare for a gaming explosion like no other because ptk blam is in the house how you doing buddy and what you playing i'm good man glad to be here man i like the new digs it's all comfy in here it's like ikea yeah. it's like it's, it's <laughs> nice in here yeah i like it man so shout out to you guys shout out to chad first time on but i'm good man glad to glad to be here what's up Kay asante how you doing bro hey we waiting on you that know. season that's season three man Man, yeah, yeah. I, I know you're not hey, in hey it, now. but we, we looking hey. forward to it. No spoilers, sir. I <laughs> <laughs> right, shout out to you, KS. appreciate it. Always, <laughs> always good to see you too, brother. But what I'm playing, man, we it seems like we've all been doing a little bit of the same thing. Now, I haven't played Dragon's Dogma 2. Yes, I know chat pile on me, right? I'm the last of the Mohicans, but I will get there. Pong is going to drag me there if I don't do it myself. He's yep, already yep. told me that's what's going to happen, so I better mm -hmm. make it happen sooner than later. But... Uh, outside of that, obviously, been jumping, playing Diablo. That's always my daily grind. Um, and actually, me and wife have been playing that that SpongeBob game that's in Game Pass. Kind of oh, playing okay. it together. Is it co-op? Uh, no, not co-op, but we just okay. kind of passing the controller back and forth. It's, you know, kind of a platform game. And, you know, it's pretty cool. You know, we've been trying to beat all the stages, collect the socks and all the little spatulas and all the little cool items that come along with it. So a little bit of that. Uh, Brotato's always a nice game to mm -hmm. jump into. And um, it's really a hidden gem, man. I, I see it on my timeline here and there, but it's really a good game, man. Like, I, I you know, it's a game I can jump into, play 20 minutes and feel like uh, I got something done. So uh, playing that. Uh, but I, other than that, I heard you guys been watching a lot of animated shows. I know, Asante, you're talking about X-Men 97 with yeah, the kids. Yeah. So uh, I'm, I'm a bit of an anime guy myself. So uh, just finished up, the obviously, the first season of Solo Level and been watching that with my daughter. Oh, nice. Um, so, you know, that's, that's more recent, you know, but either way. Um, but, yeah, so I've been doing that, playing a little bit of games. But other than that, man, I'm, I'm ready to get this thing started. Appreciate you having me. Yeah, yeah, appreciate you coming by. It was kind of last minute. I was like, hey, PTK, you want to you jump on? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're appreciate like, yeah, it, man. Yeah, sure. Um, oh, it's, you like sci-fi, right? So Yeah, oh, absolutely. I just watched the show, The Three Body Problem. I don't know if you've seen that. I have not watched that yet. Netflix, Randall right Thor, I, I was on a show with him, and he recommended it. And I was like, how, how good can this be? Uh, let's see. Uh -huh. I binged it in like a day. It, it was so good. Wow. Uh -huh. Okay, I got to watch it, man. Yeah, so I recommend it. It's from the directors of Game of Thrones. So it was like that okay. uh, slow build up to something epic. That's all I'll say. Okay. It's, it's okay. really, really cool. So. Uh, I would definitely recommend sci-fi. So Game of Thrones plus sci-fi uh, equals that show. So see, see if nice. you like. It. <laughs> nice. <laughs> As always, I, I cannot forget my my co-host uh, Fuzzy. He's here to steer us through these topics, pun intended, because this man is a racing legend. 
right? <laughs> he probably has more hours in GT7 and Forza than probably Digi Digital Foundry themselves. You know, he, rev it up <laughs> for the fuzzy Belvedere. How you doing, man? What, what are you playing? Oh, glad to be here. Glad we got these special guests on with us tonight. Always good to have my brother PTK on here and always awesome to have Kea Asante on here as well. Just been playing a lot of Dragon's Dogma 2, uh, just having fun with that game. It's it, for the most part, it even though it's a totally different genre as far as like the environment, it, it's kind of the same vibe I had with like Starfield, like playing hour after hour just like oh let me let me go here and see what's around this you know neck of the woods kind of thing uh literally neck of the woods with with uh dragon's dogma <laughs> but um yeah i'm 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 finding that even when i try to run away from the drakes um they somehow follow me or cut off the path and wind up having to fight a cyclops to get to me type of thing <laughs> so and, and just seeing other people's clips like where a guy was on an ox cart Fought the uh, ogre, got back on the cart, and just before he was about to step on the cart, the griffin smashed it. <laughs> so it's like <laughs> this game is just like tons of fun as far as like the unexpected, uh, and and it's not like the unexpected like like in a Dark Souls kind of way where you'd be like pissed off. Well, I'd be pissed off. I'd have to you know redo stuff, but it's like all right, I guess I'm not taking this ox cart. I guess I'm you know walking it back to the next town. And, um, you know, just fighting along the way or finding, you know, treasure chests and things like that. But that's been the main game. But I've been bouncing around between Undisputed. Hopefully that comes to console later this year. Um, it, it's to give me my my fight night, uh, you know, rush, mm. I guess you could say. Yep. Um, unfortunately, EA just doesn't want to, I guess, deal with licensing for it and <laughs> stuff like that. But this small team has definitely got something special. A uh, few things I got to tweak here and there, but overall, uh, awesome fighting game. Uh, good lineup. Need a few more, you know, more recent fighters uh, uh, in there if they can, or even if they do it as DLC, that's fine. Uh, but just enjoying that. Uh, like PTK, also enjoying uh, Brotato. Um, it's like an yeah, easier man. version of Vampire Survivor for me. And it, yeah. it, it has like this silly look to it where it <laughs> took me a while to figure out that you can combine the weapons. Like that was the big thing. I'm like, do I have, I keep on getting these like common level ones and I see this purple one. And then I figured out, oh, if you got two commons or if you got two of the blue ones or whatever, mm -hmm. and they, they match up and then they'll up level it and stuff like that. But once I figured that out, it's like, all bets are off on that game. Uh, just a bunch of fun, just trying to survive. And now I'm playing one player where it's like a or one character where you don't really have any weapons. You're you're just basically outrunning the enemies before the clock runs out. Um, and that that was uh, a little more hectic, but uh, having fun with that. And then uh, as always, my GT7 doing my weekly uh, you know unlocks and things like that. Same thing with Forza Horizon Five, like. The big thing now, anybody that, you know, played Forza Horizon 5 and then put it down for a bit, I encourage you to hop back in. They have like a community thing right now where uh, if you do enough dirt races, it unlocks uh, a new F-150 Raptor for the entire community. And if you do enough uh, like on track or on road races, it unlocks a new Mustang for the entire community. So, you know, if you haven't picked it up in a while, definitely hop back in, help out the community getting those cars, or at least uh, participate in it. So if they do eventually get unlocked, you'll get those in like your mailbox later on and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's what I've been doing for the most part. Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to jump straight into our, our first topic. Uh, so this one is, is courtesy of Fuzzy. I'm actually going to put uh, the, the article on the screen. So... Fuzzy brought this to my attention. It's been kind of speculated uh, that the next system for Xbox would be a handheld device. There was a leak that Xbox was working on another system due to like a newer dev kit model. And then another leak came out recently that the Series X is just having like a, a digital version, uh, which we can we can talk about. Uh, but I, I wanted to get into this open store idea. So PC Gamer released an article it's written by Andy Chalk. Interesting name, Andy Chalk. <laughs> uh, so the quote said, I'm going to quote a little bit of it. He's, he was speaking to Polygon at GDC and Spencer said the shift is aimed at helping to restore growth to the industry by making more games available to more 
people on more platforms, something younger games tend to take for granted. All of their stuff is available wherever they want. So for Xbox, our brand pivot as we attract and maintain relevance with a younger audience is Xbox is a place where I can find the great games I want to question mark. Spencer feels like he's more a continuous part of a gaming ecosystem as a whole. When gaming on PC, he said on consoles, though, my gaming is kind of sharded to use a gaming term based on these different closed ecosystems I have to cross. End quote. So we, we do know that Xbox uh, president Sarah Bond said the company's focus on delivering the largest technical leap you will have ever seen in a hardware mm -hmm. gen with this next series of consoles. So it, it kind of if you, if you read the article, he, he has like different uh, quotes in there that kind of maybe can allude to a handheld device or, or what the future can be. We, we do know they're working on another console. It's just a matter of what that's going to look like. So I'm going to open up to you guys. What do you guys kind of foresee for the hardware of Xbox? And I'll start it off with, with you, uh, K. Asante. What, what do you what do you see? What was what was Xbox going to do? Uh, hardware specifically, I think, I, I think they've been, they, they finally, like, they, they, they finally opened all the letters I wrote. They, they, they opened them, they started reading them and they, and they decided to actually take me up on my offer that, that this would actually work because hell it worked on the surface, right? Uh, uh, you want people to, to, to have the right narrative that you tell, then you need to set that standard. You need to make that narrative, right? That, that narrative benchmark basically so like what do i see i see them creating a great reference design that people can buy but that's not the only option i, I think they, they create the reference design they set the benchmark and then they open it up because like uh to uh, in that article you, you saw you, you you heard phil talk about you know he got his legion go with him he's he's also had a rog ally he's a guy that's on the go constantly that has handhelds right uh, when when Upspec Gaming put the screen on the Series S, he had the screen on the Series S and he was rolling with it. He always games on the go. So those pain points that those folks see, he sees as well. Uh, I speak with my brother Boomstick all the time. Shout out to Mr. Boomstick. Yep, you know, shout, out. <laughs> shout out to right? Boom. Yep. Yeah, he's like, look, you know, there's a lot, a lot of people want lots of different things. I just want an Xbox right here. It's got to be here. And when I turn it on, it's got to be an Xbox. It can't be an Xbox like. It can't be an Xbox fake. It has to be an Xbox in all sense of the word. And basically, that's what Phil said as well, right? Oh, this doesn't work as well as that. That doesn't work as this. I see a world where they put Xbox on a handheld, right? But of course, since this is Microsoft and they are, they focus on services and they focus on partners, right? That doesn't mean the Lenovo Legion Go gets left behind. That doesn't mean that the asus rock ally gets behind or any of, of those others i foresee a world where they set the standard and then they let others follow suit so if you want their first party you can have their first party and it's all there if you don't want their first party and you have other devices that you want to load it on that will be an option too now is that the final form you see in the short term possibly not but i think that's the <clears> ultimate <throat> vision of it and when that happens, I will be very messy on the damn internet because I've been saying it for years. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's what I think. Your bar is off, Kay Asante. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, pizza no, that, That's it. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. I, I think you're right on the money with that. I, I, I do wonder what it looks like in, in terms of. Like, if you're making a handheld device, you can't just, just port it over. There's certain things you, you want to mm -hmm. make it like a, a, a seamless experience for the people who yep. like to play on handheld. So I, I do wonder mm -hmm. what features that they'll implement if they do mm -hmm. a handheld. Mm -hmm. Like, like uh, how you record your games, for example. Would it just, I don't know. <laughs> would it be? Would that be different? Um, mm -hmm. Would uh, the controls? It's, it's interesting you, know? you asked that question about how you record your handheld. Uh, mm -hmm. As you know, I've been playing with that Play Night stuff, right? Yep. And the hardest thing right now, because Play Night runs on Windows, I have Windows based handhelds. People are like, how did you do that? Like, I wanted to show this is a big box version. Play Night is another one. This is big box. Also does similar things, right? The mm -hmm. hardest thing to do currently is within Windows to record what's on the screen, have a game change, and keep recording. 
Because the minute the game loads up, it'll go new thing, turn off, (laughs) right? So obviously there's a a new world that we need to kind of get to where that's, I think, why when I say PC or a PC world, people are like, ah, we don't want PC. Today's PC has many limitations. But mm. since they're thinking in this way, I think tomorrow's PC will solve those technical hurdles. They're easy to solve relatively from a technical perspective. And mm-hmm. I, I do think that they will modify the PC in order to make this seamless thing as seamless as possible for, for the people. Yeah. 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 I mean, that one of the reasons why I definitely want to get into this topic is because you got you know, you got idle sloth, right? When you when you uh, <laughs> when you put out that article or, or mm-hmm. you put out your thread about the um what what was it called it, it's the play manager the, the yeah the play night the play night manager the play yeah, night yeah. manager uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So apparently there's like different templates and people sharing different Many. things online yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm, um mm-hmm. it's pretty cool man I, I didn't know much about it till you posted it and I, I think you just gave more awareness that this exists this this stuff that's what i want but because exists, yeah. everybody was like yo xbox needs to do this because i need it seamless handheld this i'm like i hear you it needs to happen and until it happens from them it won't be seamless but you have options today like today yep. you just got to work on it a little bit take a couple hours sit there tweak it a little bit before long even like like as we speak i have retro i have you know all various platforms that i own legally all right here in, in a one solid package including xbox right and you never see the desktop that's the key right when when, when diyers go in we want a beginning a middle and end without ever seeing windows and i've achieved that it takes some time but i've achieved that so you too can do it and it's not coding i didn't i didn't make it ladies and gentlemen i'm just using what is available to the people if you know it you know yeah and it could be a good layout for xbox to look at when you do a handheld because again like indeed when when you do a handheld device i don't think i just want to see a a port like you just drop xbox onto this device Mm -hmm. i want to Mm -hmm. feel like a a good handheld experience whether you dock it i don't know how they're going to want to do it but you know, I I, I kind of I want that experience. But I've been wanting a handheld for a while, and I think it differentiates Xbox a little bit. Uh, if you want to get away, <laughs> you want them to get away for PlayStation or whatever. Uh, they they would be going against, going against the Switch a little bit, but it, it, it's still that I'm sure they're going to have better graphics. And, N- and Nintendo's yeah, okay not even that. sweating. Yeah. Nintendo's yeah, not yeah, sweating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. N- yeah. Nintendo is like That's whatever. Not be a problem at all. Yeah. 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 Nintendo is just yeah. like like smoke a cigar. Yeah. Like oh, you you joining us? Or like, mm. Join the table. Mm. <laughs> mm. <Yes>. Smug. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes, sure. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> all right, P2K. What, what do you think uh, from this article? From what KSI oh, was saying? What, what do you think you is going to the non-tech guy in the group? No, but um, no, 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 no. But um, no, I think it's an interesting concept. I've always thought about this three bit like this is something that i've sat on for what if they ever just tried to do this like if they seriously tried to do it what would it look like so i think kasante brought up some cool points right you you way more of a tech guy than i am asante but even for me being kind of a tech novice with this handheld stuff like i think there's some baseline things that even i would want obviously the seamlessness you got to have that it has to be an xbox you're 100 right about that we need the native gameplay you, you can't really be cloud-based because we're not there yet and i think that would just be that would be just another handheld that you know ps portal right you know a very similar device we need something that stands out you know what what's going to separate xbox now the nintendo thing's not going to be an issue because they're not competing with nintendo nobody is in that space so right. surprise Anybody thought that that was a thing? Surprise. Nobody's really competing when Nintendo Steam Deck's doing a great job. But even, you know, Nintendo has such a, their fan base is just different. You know, they're just different. They have such a great legacy with handhelds. But I think that Xbox can do some very cool things to differentiate themselves. Um, the hardware, I think, is going to be there. Um, for me, I was thinking about a couple things, too. You brought up the uh, the UI. And I never considered, like, how much of that could they actually bring over? into a smaller form factor because that ui does quite a bit i mean they've they've trimmed some of the fat over time you yeah. know we they got rid of some things but it it hasn't really had an up it hasn't really had a, a major uh overhaul in a while and what would that ui look like in a small form factor like would you just go mm-hmm. pure windows do you just make it you know windows with an xbox skin on it you know don't they already have something uh ksante three bit uh don't they have a yeah. windows mobile 
Well, already? well, they, they, yep. they kind of let that one slide a bit, but even in that play night community I was I was playing with, with a little while ago, they literally have an Xbox UI. That is literally the Xbox UI. It just fills in with all the, the PC games you have. Yeah. So they, 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 they people have like ideated and iterated on that design. It's just like like you guys are saying, and I wholeheartedly agree, that UI has been on there for quite some time. It took them yeah. a long time to get it right. And now yeah. it seems to be a little, a little long in the tooth. So the it'll tooth, be interest, yeah. interesting to see what they do. If they slap the same exact UI on a new device, I think people might get upset. Imagine getting I like, think so like too. A, a, yeah. imagine fuzzy, fuzzy. Imagine getting like the third iteration of the newest car and the infotainment system is exactly the same as the three previous three ones, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's a yeah, little bit, be a bit a little yeah. disappointing, but yeah. 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 And yeah. and that so, I mean Yeah, yeah, go ahead. No, there, there's just some there's some small things, but I think that we're right for it. Now the docking is interesting, three bit. I've thought about that too. Do they do they go that route? Do they decide to do um, you know, go the docking route, make some type of hybrid? That's interesting, right? Like mm-hmm. I, I'm I'm more leaning just full on handheld. Um, the docking thing could be cool. I just I'd prefer just a full on handheld experience just for me. Just like I said, um, I think they're ripe for it though, man. They got the infrastructure, they got the games. Um, how does Game Pass fit in that too? It's it's perfect, obviously, um, from a portability value standpoint. You already got that. Just lean into what you're good at. It's so funny that we always talked about Xbox and we always look at these three companies and we said, Well, you know, Sony's the 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 one that's in the lead. You know, Nintendo has a great legacy that they can lean on. And people always harp on Xbox for not like having a thing really or just not being known for something. You know, Xbox actually has multiple things that they're known for, right? And innovation is one of the, the biggest ones. And this is another space that they can innovate in, you know, in my opinion. So I'm super excited going forward. I think the handheld idea is cool. It's grown on me three bit. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. If you asked me this question like eight months ago, I'm like, ah, three bit, you tripping. <laughs> like, nah, bro. This is not, this is not, but I, it's grown on me talking to Pong having conversations in the DMs with different people, people like you, 3-Bit, mm-hmm. Mav, just different people in the community have convinced me over time that this is something that they they probably should do. Like, this went from a maybe, maybe kind of a pet project to me to absolutely, like, I'm 100% sold on them in going this route. Yeah, and I mean, and that brings the conversation to steam right when we talk about an yeah. open store yeah. and we talk about handheld it, it's also uh what what phil says a lot in this article could also shift to an open platform so just imagine steam for a second uh being on the xbox store what is <laughs> what does that look like you know uh <laughs> right? that, that's that's like a, a whole new future uh for sure if, if you're able to play some steam games so um I'll, I'll get to you fuzzy uh, and then we'll, we'll 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 talk about that but uh what do you think what do you think fuzzy Ooh, there's so much that i i want from uh xbox as far as with this handheld and I, I, I was on a podcast with uh post up yesterday and he brought some good points as far as the seamlessness of it where their lead in ai if they can come up with a way where this thing recognizes that you're you know, playing on your console, you're getting up from your console, you pick up the handheld and it knows that you're switching from the console to the handheld. It's able to pick it up almost like a quick resume from, from point to point between the two pieces of hardware. And then if you decide to go over to your, you know, your workstation or your computer desk, set the, you know, the portable on the dock or just set it down. And then you start, you know, loading up the Xbox app or whatever on your computer it'll be able to pick up from where you left off on the handheld. So having all of your, your synced data across all those pieces of hardware should be the, the key priority. That that would be the biggest thing. And then also, even though I know they kind of killed Cortana, um, you know, kind of early on, but with chat GPT and, and AI stuff that they've been, you know, working on in, in the background now, making it where possibly, you know, the portable or, or, or your, your portable's with you. You're on the way home, whether you're taking public trans or you got a self-driving car, or whatever the case may be, you can tell that that portable, all right, let go ahead and start the the uh, party chat on the console. Uh, let everybody know I'll be there in 15 minutes, have the game loaded for the uh, multiplayer window, and go from there. 
that might be a bit, a bit of a stretch in today's terms or today's tech, but I think that's something that they could work towards, especially with having a handheld and making everything se uh, seamless across the board type of deal. But I think the big thing now is just that even though the Steam Deck and all of these PC handhelds aren't really making, you know, a dent compared to like a, a Nintendo Switch, they are making inroads into the gaming community. Like people that would have never touched the PC before look at these as almost like the, the you know, the baby step between, you know, going full blown PC kind of thing, because it has a console feel. Yeah. The software is not as, you know, smooth or, or seamless in comparison. And the UI, like what uh, Kea Sante was talking about, will help that. And I think that they they can probably put something together, give it a you know fresh coat of paint, make it where it feels like it's an actual portable Xbox kind of thing. And I think that would be the the way to go for them to make it so th this would have that much more appeal. You know, for somebody that may already have the S and was looking at putting the screen on it type of thing, and considers oh maybe that's not as portable. I mean, if you're taking the trip, you know, and you're going to be in the hotel kind of thing, yeah, that's probably fine, but. If you're just going to be, you know, driving to like a convention or something along those lines, an actual like Steam Deck like kind of item might be the better way to go. And I, I just I'm really looking forward to that, especially like like you said, on the back end of this this uh, topic where, you know, if they open up that store, I can now have access to all of the games that I could play on my PC without having to worry about doing remote play. I can have access to Game Pass. I can have access to my Xbox library all in one. And I I keep on saying this as a like a sort of a joke, but it kind of makes sense where I wish they would have saved the Xbox One name for this next device. Because if if that device is kind of like what we're thinking, that should have been the Xbox One, the one place to play your yeah. PC games and your that console games. Yeah. They'd they be messing up with the names, games. man. <laughs> <laughs> well i already think this if they can't call it an xbox one on the go or something like that just call it uh xbox series go like you know how they have the the uh what do you I call like it that. surface go like mm. this will be the xbox yeah. series go yeah. Yeah. i like that's nice that. i like yeah, that's, that that's yeah. nice. pretty good nice and yeah. simple yeah it, it, isn't it weird how they keep putting the cart before the horse right yeah you you you, you you kill Cortana before you give her a brain. And now here's the brain with no voice. I'm like, no, <laughs> what are we doing? <laughs> you know, I got a well, question, you know gentlemen. They, yeah. Well, if they if they bring it back, have it where like chat GPT, you could already name or have it call you whatever you want it to refer you to as. And you can yeah. also rename chat GPT as, as like yeah. this interactive, you know, assistant. Maybe everybody by default will have it called Cortana. At that point, I know I'll do that. Cortana back that way, <laughs> sure, for sure, yes. And PTA, I got a question. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I, you know, we're we're talking about a lot of the internals. We're talking about a lot of you know hypothetical things going on with the ecosystem, and you know all these things that we're talking about coming over. But I want to talk a little about something that that probably is ultimately going to determine you know with with this with the, where this how successful the handheld is, and um, that's price as well. I've been curious about that too because you've already kind of said a a baseline with the series s right mm -hmm. at 300 bucks right so where is the sweet spot because i mean do you have do you do you because do you leverage power with the cons not with the handheld you know you're gonna are you if you're gonna do all these cool things like what does that look like on that scale because ultimately that's gonna be a big deal too i mean you have a lot of other handhelds in the market hovering at four or five hundred dollars six hundred dollar price range too but you know where, where do you guys think that that series go you know could land or should land for xbox for it to be as successful as you guys think it should be or could be mm. that's a good question I'll yeah go I ahead i'll start um for me i i think to to help the success for this or or to kind of ensure the success for it is like the 400 dollar price point and the, the reason why i say okay. that is okay. there are plenty of docs on the market already so even if they make one kind of like the Steam Deck where it's like $80 or whatever, there's ones on Amazon for 20 So I don't think, unless we're going to have it where that dock has got its own built-in GPU or something along those lines, which then that throws the price way out of whack. I, I don't I don't think this really needs to be much beyond 400 or have like an entry point where maybe it's 512 gigabytes or, or maybe a terabyte at the $400 mark. And then if you do want to do a two terabyte, maybe you're at the 450 or 500 mark, but at least get the the foot in the door price be around 400. Because I think the 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 baseline uh, Steam Deck now with the LCD and the 512, I think they've reduced that to around uh, 399. So mm -hmm. keep it 
on par with that one. I mean, I wouldn't mind a more powerful one. I guess they could yeah. do more options, but then that means more SKUs and, and whatnot. I was going to say but, more SKUs, yeah. But I, I think this needs to be less than 500. I wouldn't be opposed to 450, but I think 400 is like that sweet spot where hopefully, like if 400's out of some people's price range, hopefully by like a holiday or, you know, a, a special event or something like that, you know, $50 off, or maybe they pack in a game or something like that. And it will make it a little bit more of a, a easier pill to swallow. But I think 400 is like the the safe bet to give this the best success out the door, I think. Nice. Yeah. Uh... I don't I don't disagree. I, I don't disagree. Um so so like for example, the Asus the Asus or ROG Ally, the, the one they sold, the one they pimped out, right? The one they, they were they were touting left and right was the six ninety nine variant, right? The the extreme yeah. variant. But then they yeah. had a lower skew that came out later that was I think five or four hundred and now you can even get it for three ninety nine, four hundred bucks, right? So uh it's uh, valve has already come out and said you will not see the next gen steam deck from them until two three years from now which is which coincidentally will most likely line up to right when the next the next, the next. uh the handheld thing that we're talking about here will, will come out right they are they are trying to benefit from optimizations of technology on the amd's uh, uh roadmap right they they've already talked about the the next mobile apus they're already in the 8000 series now you know the the Zen three Zen four. They're getting closer and closer to optimizing, optimizing, using, uh, doing more with exactly the same power and profile you have today, which equals the generational optimizations. So if they're able to subsidize where uh, AMD um, ASUS was not able to, right? That turns that six ninety nine into maybe four or four fifty, right? Yeah. Um. Again, though, I don't think this world is an either or. So yeah, yeah, you're still getting a hand. You're still getting a console, like a proper console, right? You're getting like a, a like a normal everyday console that you 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 should be you would be used to. I honestly think that the magic will be in the software because if where where I think they're going is where they're going, it won't be the same. You know how how you guys said, oh, you can't profile for for it anymore. It's, it's a different skew. Yes, it will, but it shouldn't matter. Because within the confines of that new device, whether it be handheld or whatever, it still has exactly the same profile as the set top box that's in your in front of your living room, right? Mm -hmm. As yep. long as the overhead of the host is enough to handle it, you developer can just profile once. You're doing it for your standard device and you're moving forward, right? The the overhead that's in the handheld device will handle all that. And within the enclave that is the operating system of the console, it'll just think it's a standard handheld and those optimizations will take place. So it may still be, and, and there's a lot of mushy middle. I'm, I, I explain it in such a simplistic way. You think it's just turnkey. The devil yeah. will be in its implementation, you know, but I do think that, that you're right on the money there. Like the, the $400 range is probably good. My question though is if, because they're, they're going to continue that two skew approach, right? So you're going to have your handheld device and you're going to have your set top box, which is more powerful. That's the question. Mm -hmm. Right. And I know when Good I question. say that, everybody, everybody will go, oh, come on now. The handheld can't be more powerful. Times are a changing, ladies and gentlemen. Times are a changing. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like there will come a yep. time where the optimizations in handheld will propel it kind of equaling the Series X or beyond it. Right. So if you make the handheld 400 yeah. bucks and it's really performant, like the people who buy the set top box want even more oomph. So then what you what do you price that at? Like, those are the questions where I, I need to see what they'll really implement it at. But it's exciting times because I honestly think that it will push all boats up. Everybody will have to innovate because the floor will be much higher than it is today. And that, that's what excites me the most. Yeah, for sure. And uh, here, here's my thoughts, right? I, I'm always in the camp where I want almost everything. <laughs> <laughs> I want the course, most power I can possibly yeah, get. Right. Cause, cause that, and that's that's what <clears throat> kind of pushes me away from Nintendo a lot of the times because I, I play a Nintendo game, you get that tiled grass, I'm like, mm -hmm. mm, nah. <laughs> right? Or you get games. Magic that, with the abacus, man. That's what it like, is. Magic mm. with the abacus. <laughs> I, I just can't. I, I want that power. Like it, it, nope. It's like one thing on a lot, of, a lot of Nintendo games cater to a certain art style because of the power, right? Yeah. Um, so if you can, if, I mean, this, this, if, if I was in charge of, of, uh, this handheld device, it would probably be pretty expensive. 
Uh, <laughs> that that's just me though. Uh, and maybe what I'll do yeah. as the new head of uh, Xbox, I'm declaring now. Um, what I would do is make different uh, SKUs of the handheld, like have the premium handheld option. Mm-hmm. Where you want you want all that power, it, it maybe you can dock and do all this different stuff. Mm-hmm. Maybe it has more a little bit more RAM or, or, or something like that inside of it. Then maybe that will be five hundred. So the price of a Series X kind of is pricey, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Uh, you know it, it is what it is, right? Um, and then for that option that you guys are talking about, you get the best of both worlds. Maybe a little bit less, kind of like the Series S for handhelds, a little bit. Yeah, uh, yeah. you get that four hundred dollar uh, option. So maybe two mm-hmm. different handles. I, that might be expensive to manufacture. I, you know, but this is this my my yeah vision. yeah. yeah. <laughs> see, see, and, and what you're describing there, the three bit, like what you're describing is the world where the software does the magic. Because today, if you were to give somebody way more oomph for the console you'll never see that used until the console developer, the game developer cracks open the egg that is the game and says, hey, you have now more overhead, That's, right? But if, you have, yeah. if you're living in a new world where it's kind of like a PC, you get more power, you use more power, it sees more capabilities, it uses the more capabilities without a developer having to mess with it. So there would no, it would be, it would be a, P, a, a console in only marketing because in, re, act, in actual fact, it would be a PC that they've just kind of cleaned up very well so that you console gamer won't have to go in the background and play with the drivers. Yep. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and, and shout out to, to web Dave. I, I guess he rated my channel. A bunch yeah. Of shout out, shout out to Dave. Yeah. Shout out to Dave. Uh, appreciate you, man. I, I've been on the show a couple of times. Good, good dude. Good dude. Uh, Absolutely. So great, great you, member man. of the community. Yeah. So I, I, we talked about this a little bit, but before we jump into the next topic, I do kind of want to, dive into speculation town for what that means for steam if steam were an app if i go to game pass you know it has Mm -hmm. it has like ea um uh, being on game pass uh ubisoft Mm -hmm. was like was uh kind of hinted on for a while like Mm -hmm. ubisoft entering the store so what if i turn on my xbox and i get a steam app within game pass for example what does that look like for the future of gaming? Because so, for me, that's 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 really opening up the ecosystem. You're talking about like you have the console players and the PC players, but if you just got all PC games all of a sudden just work through an app on a console, which I mean, we had the Steam console device before, right? Like so it. Steam they kind machines. Of, the Steam yeah. machines. <laughs> so it, it, it's <laughs> shout like out it. to Dell and HP. Yeah, exactly. That's right. <laughs> so we we had that kind of before, but yep. I, I just want to open it up to you guys because we we, we kind of talked around it a little bit. But what if Steam was an app on like Xbox Game Pass? What what do you guys envision that? What what do you think what would happen mm-hmm. <laughs> to the ecosystem or even like PlayStation? How they would respond or? What do you guys think that does? So, so I will say that, like, and we're in solid speculation town. Yep. I see you in there, Mav and Caitlin. <laughs> salute to y'all. Hey, I'm borrowing. Hey. I'm borrowing the <laughs> moniker for just a moment. Yeah. Solid speculation town. Uh, I would say, uh, well, this is not necessarily speculation. They have been kind of circling each other for a long time, Microsoft and, and Valve. They, I, like I've said it before, there have been there have been like uh, events and shows that I've watched where they have used the Steam app. As a, as, a, as a marketing tool, Microsoft has, like, it's been speculated that they've been wanting to have them be, like, uh, available as an option day one. And I guess the numbers didn't make sense way back when. And as such, it, it broke down. But if you've heard, every time, every time Gabe speaks on it, he has nothing but glowing things to say about Microsoft and Xbox. Even though he was the biggest proponent back in the day. People don't remember. He was the biggest hater of Microsoft when he left Microsoft. That's where he started, yeah. right? Walked across the street and started his own company. They're literally across the street from each other in Bellevue, right? And 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 now it's like, oh, I don't need a, I don't need a contract from them. You know, I don't need any of that. They, they've worked with us, you know, numerous years. We're fine, right? Mm-hmm. I honestly think from a technical perspective, from a technical standpoint, it's already there. Uh, as you said, in, in, in the Game Pass app, you can literally see the plugins uh, since they allowed uh, um, um, Diablo 4 to come to, right. to Game Pass. When you open it and hit the button, well, guess what it does? It opens Battle.net in the background, and there mm-hmm. you go. It's not in Game Pass. It's actually a shortcut 
to battle pass right uh, to, to mm. battle net right yep. uh um same thing with some of the ub connect games i open i'm trying to play ac uh ac uh odyssey in there i open it up it opens ub connect right? that it could does be that. why certain games are remember they said like certain games are going to take a while to put on game pass take it a could, while exactly that could be so, why, yeah. exactly absolutely and what i have actually heard like as far as like the, the logistical technical details, I don't think that's a hurdle to climb. I honestly think that today's world is why you have those other stores pop up because that's just the way Windows works today. Soon enough, you can have it open without the other stores popping up. It's just directly into the main store. Now, people go, why the hell would Valve wanna do that? Why the hell would any store wanna do that? Two reasons, one, if they don't have, if they have zero percent of that market, it's a smaller market, but they don't have any place in that market today. If Microsoft brings you there, you're now in the living room, right? Only geeks knew you and brought you in the living room before because geeks had to seek out Valve, right? Like the reason people go, oh, Steam Deck didn't sell that much because you got to go on Steam.com to go pre-order it. You can't just walk into a Best Buy, right? And even there, it sold two, two some odd million. I think like the last estimates are two, three million uh copies or whatever right when you bring it to the living room now you're giving them so much more agency so much more eyes how much is that worth to valve how much is that worth to microsoft i i don't know how much that's worth but i know i am not a two sometimes three trillion dollar company so my pockets <laughs> can't speak to that you know you know what i'm saying yeah, like, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. they see beyond all of that so that's one and two i am thinking that that ultimate device will be tied into windows let's say windows 12 for example and every windows 12 comes with this window uh, this gaming ui right that also allows you to do that which is what they leverage on the handheld or in the console it, depending on where you leverage it it either shows you just the desktop ui because it's a pc or it shows you just the xbox ui because you're on a handheld or or a console but still at its heart it's the same operating system if you do that and then you don't allow the other stores in, right? It is actually a mandate to let the other stores in because now you're being monopolistic because the minute you add Windows, you add gaming to Windows and you preclude the others, yeah, they can go to regulatory bodies and say, see what they're doing? They're only pimping mm. their stores and not ours. It is a mandate to put Steam on there. It's a mandate yeah. to put Epic Games on there. Like in Europe right now, you, you boot up a free, well, I, I think they closed it recently. Before you boot up, you boot up a Windows machine the first time and it goes, which OS, which uh, browser do you want? Here's, uh, here's uh, Chrome, here's, because if you don't, now you're being monopolistic. Same yeah. thing with the stores. Which right? is why people so should idea, look at those Epic stores and exactly. or, or what's happening. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So the idea that why would they want to do that? Uh, whether Microsoft likes it or not, they may have to yeah. if they tie it into <laughs> the biggest operating system in the world that everybody uses. You know. Yeah. Facts. Facts. Uh, any any thoughts on that, Fuzzy or PTK? Before we 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 jump in, next topic. Um, oh. I guess I'll go quick here. You know, uh, I mean, like I said, from from a, just a gaming standpoint, I'm just gonna look at this from a caveman. I I'm I don't have the technical <laughs> knowledge that you have in your pinky, K. Asante. I'm not even gonna try. Stop but, that, bro. Stop that. Ah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know? No, 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 no. Just from a just from a it's it's an interesting proposition because selfishly, I would love to play all those games. I would love to have access. I don't own a PC gaming PC as of yet. I will very soon. All right, you guys are dragging me to the dark side. I'm not actually getting dragged. To be honest with you, I'm lying. I'm probably just going willingly. But anyway. <laughs> um, I gotta be honest about it at this point, but um, I just selfishly for me, I want access to those games, and I think I think it would be a cool proposition. Now, I guess you could argue the value, like you said, how much does Valve value um the Xbox platform? They haven't from from that standpoint very much. I mean, they've always had a very um even relationship. Like you said, Gabe mm -hmm. does speak very highly. I don't hear him say um very too many negative things about Xbox. So I guess you could stand on that, but. Um, I guess just looking from a gaming standpoint, I want to play those games. I'd love to play. God, I want to play Last Epoch. I can't play it on console. You know, yeah. uh, I want to play yeah. uh, Enshrouded. I can't play that on my Xbox, right? So, like, just from a selfish standpoint, please, like, I'm cool with that, you know? So, and I guess I'll just leave it at that. Yeah. Thanks, thanks. I, I, I kind of want to pee back on that, that same matter of it as far as, like, there are so many early access games or PC only games that 
Mm -hmm. A lot of them nowadays have controller support. So it's not like it used to be where it'd be an issue for like keyboard and mouse. So a a perfect example is ready or not. Now you can play that keyboard and mouse, but there's also um, a lot of variants or, or layouts out there for controller support for ready or not. And if you've ever wanted something kind of like Rainbow Six Siege, but more updated or have a lot more variety, that would have been the perfect game to come to console that probably won't come to console for a while. Same thing with uh, Six Days of Fallujah. Like if you're a military sim type person and you want something that's more mil sim than like a Call of Duty by far kind of thing, there are so many options out there they're on pc that are in that early access that we probably won't ever see on console or if we do it's like two three years down the road that to me would be like the the eye opener and hopefully more so a a kick in the pants to ea and and even you know uh, the call of duty uh, franchise as far as having raw competition on the console space that makes uh, a lot of the customer base ask for more things. And and like I mentioned earlier, Undisputed is another example, a boxing game that many of us has asked for years out of EA. And, you know, whether it's just because they're just focused on UFC or they're not interested in the licensing game, whatever the case may be, a smaller studio is, is, you know, done that and it will be coming to console, but it might not come to console until late this year or sometime next year. But having that access in the store now You'd be able to download it, play it, and it's it's controller support only. Mm-hmm. That one, no keyboard support. So that would be an eye opener for a lot of people that have been itching more like a a you know fight night game for for over a decade now. Yep. But there's just so many other titles like Hades is another one that's coming to Steam that or well, Hades too I should say, and a lot of people enjoyed the first one. But it's not going to come to console for probably a year or so. It's almost like the opposite of things like Grand, uh, uh, Grand Theft Auto, where it comes to console and then maybe a year later it comes to PC. There's so many other games that come to PC first. And then if there's time or if they think there's enough demand, it might come to console. I mean, we're kind of getting lucky with Stalker 2 being one of those first you know, PC only games coming to console. But mm-hmm. there's so many more like it. Like and, I said, and fuzzy, yeah. to, to yes. your point, sir like in the indie space it's even more true and that has nothing oh, yeah. to do with with anything else but they don't have the budget they they like i play so many awesome like i was talking about a pepper grinder such mm-hmm. a great concept cool game who knows if it'll ever come to console hopefully yeah. they make some money right mm-hmm. this yeah. way you get to play it absolutely yeah, yeah rockstar yeah, is and, and i think that'd be the... yeah go ahead oh, wait. Go ahead. no i was gonna say yeah that's that's the biggest thing it's just more more options like we always talk about options that would be the the biggest advantage at least from the gamer standpoint now the companies they can figure the percentages out and all that that that's for them to worry about i'm just worried right. about you know the games that we'll have access to yeah and and to your point i think rockstar is 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 uh one of those unique companies where they release on consoles first and get people to double dip into the pc every almost every other case you guys could think about mm-hmm. where it's pc first and then put it on console yep. uh but rockstar they they know how to get that that money so it works for them right <laughs> um and xbox is, is is in the position where they just been putting uh th- these frameworks together um for years uh, to prepare them to be able to just easily put your game on xbox the pc to your phone they've just been setting this framework up and, and it seems like playstation is, is just starting to to get into that uh with their recent comments like we need to get into the place the pc space <laughs> and you're like oh you guys should have started this a while ago uh um because right now people have expectations of playstation where we put it a year later but i feel like that's mm-hmm. going to start shrinking and shrinking because that's where the market yeah. is is going um, so we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see what, what PlayStation ends up doing, but, um, I have a feeling that that timeline is going to, going to start shrinking. I guess the, the only thing would be three bit before we, uh, uh, you know, turn pages here would be, yep. you know, how much of steam do we get? Because I mean, there's a lot more games on steam than there are on, you know, available on console and how much of that mm-hmm. makes it actually makes it to console because, you know, let's be truthful here. You can't run everything that's currently on steam on a xbox mm. yeah. you know as is yeah. just from a hardware standpoint so how much mm-hmm. of that actually comes over they'd have to filter that some way right to make it 
consistent because you don't want a bunch of different experiences just because you can put all of those games on a different platform. That doesn't make any mm. sense. It has to work. You want you want a bunch of games that work and run right. good. You yeah. know, what I mean, so how, to, to how your point, PTK, that? that will be interesting because that is that is Steam's like that's the one thing they love about not being on console. It's up to you. If it's broken, good luck, sir. Go deal <laughs> with the people who made it. Right? They don't yep. have to deal with all of that. Right? Th that's why you pay for a console so you can hit a button and it works. Right? So if they do this open platform, there's a world where you go and get some of the little bit of the little bit of the, yeah. the, the weirdness. Right? I mean, and you go. Yeah. They're gonna have to break you out of that somehow, or like I don't know. Maybe they filter it based on your hardware requirements or something. That's a space that's ripe for innovation. That is a very interesting point. Yes. Yeah. Or or maybe they could do what they do with the Steam Deck, like make it Steam Deck verified, make it like Xbox yeah. certified somehow. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. That that could be that could be something I could see them doing. Like um, yeah. make sure your game is Xbox certified, and if it's not, then maybe do Kason say like, hey, well. It's not certified. You pl you decided right. to press play. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I played like a uh, RoboCop on my, I, I got a beast PC. I'm all proud of it. Put RoboCop in there, runs at 12 frames per second. I'm like, excuse me, what? What's going on here? <laughs> Long story short, it was a problem with the developer. But for about a two, three day stint, I'm like, I'm out. What are we going to do? What you going to call Steam? Get out of here with that. <laughs> <You know? laughs> it's one of those things, you know. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. That's, that's one of those things where I'm like, uh, I always talk about when, when someone always says, like, why? Why do you even play on a console? One of the things I always bring up is is having to be your own sort of technician in a lot of ways where mm -hmm. you have to research mm -hmm. uh, what your hard drive is or, or your mm -hmm. GPU, CPU, mm -hmm. um, your, your requirement. Is it updated? Uh, things like that. Um, you kind of have to do your own research for to, to see what what's up. Uh, it so could be a simple thing. How do you blend thing. that though? Three B, three bit, right? Know. With the, with the consistency of a of a console space where you're used to just turn on play. You're not used to updating drivers. Does yeah. this work with that? You know, is this updated? See, you know, I do think that when they give you that one UI, that one hardware platform. They will work with the, because even right now, if you go into Windows, you can turn on optional so that whenever it updates your PC, it'll also update your drivers as well. Like you update mm -hmm. other people, third party drivers as well. Like the reason for it is it's Gen Pop. It's the wild, wild west. Anybody can install anything they want. If they have a approved by Xbox version, right, that one update can install everybody else's stuff as well because there's a pipeline there, right? So, mm. again, the world of PC today may not be advantageous to this to this vision, but when they create that reference design and they create that, hey, uh, you know, uh, Legion Go 2, Ally 2, you want to be part of this reference design? Well, this is how you do it. These are, this, these are the APIs you use for your cloud saves. These are the places. You, so that way, everything maintains consistency. I mean, mm. Apple does it. Right, they have a hard like lock on their hardware software partnership. Mm. Microsoft is going to have to do the same thing, and if they do, that new PC paradigm may not be the ridiculousness that people see today. You know, yeah, that that whole process of a game having to go through um, it, it goes through a lot of different tests and stuff before it can be a certification. Yep. Certification yep. that either mm -hmm. needs to go away or it needs to be sped up to fit within the steam mm -hmm. uh ecosystem if they mm -hmm. decide to add that 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 something yep. needs to change there uh if they yep. want to add steam all right let, let, let's jump into our second topic so uh this is about the xbox's content moderation uh system so, so mm -hmm. jez had an opinion piece that kind of dived into xbox's automated um, automated moderation system being pathetic and needing to be scrapped um, people reached out to Jez to, to help them um, overcome unfair bans, and, and he kind of went into this investigation, um, uh, and it, 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 the article kind of went into a lot of different uh, spheres. It, it kind of talks about um, when you buy something, you don't actually own it, which is a con of, of mm -hmm. digital content, right? Yeah. If, yeah. You, if you, for the pros for me for digital content, I don't have to get up. I don't have to put in the disc. <laughs> <laughs> which is like mm -hmm. so, so some some people they don't care but i kind of care I, i'm kind of getting lazier and lazier as i get as i get older <laughs> um but it, it, to me that that's the pro of digital content if you want to 
everything is pretty much digital anyway. So even when you have a physical disc, it just checks for a digital license. It, let's be honest. Like that's mm-hmm. just how it is nowadays. Uh, they put some data on the disc, but for the most part, it's like you get like five megabytes on the disc and the rest <laughs> you have to download anyways. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. Um, that's just how it is. So that, you know, it, it kind of goes into the the cons of having digital content, not actually owning anything, because when these people get banned, it's like they don't own it anymore. Um, so and then he, he talked about, like, if you're a content creator with a platform, you're more protected. You know, so I thought was interesting. Um, like if let's say you got like five followers on Twitter and you get banned and you you, you put a post out on Twitter, you got like five followers you're still banned because it's, it's going into to nowhere, which I, I was like, yeah, that's mm-hmm. that's that's pretty messed up. Then he also talked about uh, Final Fantasy um, permanently banning accounts for using the word uh, free company. Uh, it was it was a uh, one mm-hmm. uh, user who, who, who said that and then he his account got permanently banned. So I'm going to open it up to you guys. So, uh, Xbox's content moderation system. I know each uh, console maker xbox sony nintendo they have their own sort of content moderation uh, system <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah um, yeah so what do you guys think about all this what do you uh let's open it up to you ptk uh what do you think about the xbox's content moderation system that's interesting man i didn't get to read the article but just kind of thinking about it being a content creator thinking about it, it's i don't think about it very much you know nintendo is always the one to kind of always highlight because they're the always they're generally the most aggressive with their moderation of anything nintendo right um and they strike bans for anything you know um um regarding content at nintendo but um wow wow i actually got to think about this this is <laughs> yes yeah, I, I, I haven't yeah it's interesting cuz I, I haven't really thought about it much to be honest with you um like let's say tomorrow, PTK. Okay, give let's, me a scenario. I was gonna. Yeah, say, yeah, I'm gonna give you a scenario. So let's say you're you're playing um, Diablo because that's the first okay. game I, I thought of, and then okay. uh, you lose a dungeon and you, and uh, you're playing with an Xbox moderator and you're like, like f this dungeon, it screw you too, and whatever. <laughs> and then they they ban you for uh, like toxic language and you lose. Yeah, you can't everything. you can't get on. You lose everything. You mm-hmm. lose access. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't even matter Diablo anymore. You know all the other games, Halo. You can't you can't play anymore. So in that scenario, do you, what do you think? Because <laughs> that's what's, what's happening. You know? Yeah, yeah, that's crazy, right? That's a slippery slope. You know, like you said, everything's going more digital. That's the that's the biggest con regarding digital content is that you don't truly own it. Like you said, it's generally, generally a bunch mm-hmm. of just codes and check ins. If you do actually do have a disc, right? Um, and yep. you know, that's just really for keepsake and storage and showing off to people that visit your house. But <laughs> uh, let's be honest, you know, it is what it is. I, yes. I like collecting things and memorabilia just as much as anybody else. But when it comes to video games and content, that's just kind of where things inevitably are headed. So, I mean, we do. So that, that is a bit extreme, right? Now I'm, I'm going to say that e- even in that particular case, that is a bit extreme. And obviously mm-hmm. I wouldn't agree. I'm always on the people side. I wouldn't agree to that extent. Um, but you do run the risk of things like this happening. You know what I mean? Um, with these content creators, with, the, with these developers, um, you know, we give them a certain amount of leverage over their over their product. You know, they should have some type of leverage over it. But, you know, in, in regards to that extent, obviously, I think that's a bit that's a bit insane. So I wouldn't agree in that particular case. Um, yeah. Oh, man, that's just tough. man. That's, all right. <laughs> we, we do see it happening, man. Like it's. Mm-hmm. Ah, I, yeah it's it's tough man because we live in this digital social age and opinions matter more you know everybody's opinion you can see somebody some people can hit one button and that opinion gets out to fifty thousand, a million people you know what i mean and that just didn't exist in the past you know we mm-hmm. live in that world where um and, that, and that's another balance too you know if you are a um developer that makes these games people are entitled to those opinions and you're going to see them you know, more than ever, like you can't hide from people's opinions anymore. Like this is not the mm-hmm. age of where, you know, people were getting magazines once a month and that was the updates, you know, regarding the video games like that doesn't exist anymore. You know, people, you know, are consuming content. They will give you those opinions. So people are entitled in public forums to give you those opinions and you're going to see them regardless of if you ban content and if you ban people from being able to access this content. So you're still not going to avoid, you know, those things, you know, so, um, that balance is weird though, man. It, it's yeah. I, I never agree with something that strict, 
but mm-hmm. it's yeah that's tough man <laughs> and i, I put tough. it I, I probably phrase it in a way like because uh, to be fair i i, I kind of like read some parts in the article i don't know if yeah, they're no, fully permanently banning people or if it's just like certain game or that specific game oh, okay, okay, so okay, okay from I what know. i've read it seemed like it could be a permanent thing on your account but you know <laughs> it, and it does get into the the what I've always said, I feel like there needs to start being digital rights for people. Mm-hmm. Like if mm-hmm. you own a digital uh, copy of a game, like that is yours. Because mm-hmm. what happens in a lot of cases, people buy a game, and then the developers like, eh, I don't really want to support this game anymore. Well, you you paid, let's say you put you put seventy dollars into well, it, you bought some skins, probably hundreds of dollars into the skins, and they decided they don't want to uh, have the servers up anymore you know your money just goes I down mean, the drain look at, look at destiny bungie they 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 <laughs> threw content in the trash nope i you even that that 80 dollars you pay for that dlc can't even play it anymore it doesn't even exist yeah. anymore yeah <laughs> so uh, that that's i feel like digital rights needs to be like some yeah. sort of moderation there with the government probably this is the one thing i'm like the government you, maybe you should step in here because a lot of studios are just like shutting down games and then all your money is gone uh something needs to happen i don't know what needs to happen there but something needs to happen where you feel a little bit more protected of the digital space because the digital space is increasing like before it was more so the physical you're getting physical games and then digital you kind of get some now it's like the opposite you get more digital games than physical so there needs to be there's something there and xbox one they tried right uh, with the xbox one I mean, release that was a vision initially right yeah it was a little bit too early right that's why we don't have the the, the people being able to trade trading games digitally right yeah. yeah that was a thing at one point that was an idea so yeah so uh, i'll bring it to uk asante so from that opinion piece when he kind of mm-hmm. dove into you know he, he dove into you don't when you buy some you don't actually own it you you get banned from games like this and if you're not a content creator yep. with a platform uh mm-hmm. then you're not as protected because you, you you say like hey i got unfairly banned and no one sees it, it no one it hears you to, like, yeah. yeah no one hears yeah. you so so what do you what do you uh, essentially think i have been talking about this whole forever physical thing being a farce for a long time since 360 days, they've been lying to you, selling you frisbees, making you feel good about yourself. It is a lie. It always <laughs> has been a lie, right? So I appreciate him, him putting that together. This is part of a bigger problem that I feel gaming and we as content creators or, or educators in this space need to galvanize our community on, right? This is just the tip of the iceberg, right? Uh, I appreciate what Microsoft is doing here because let's be real like there needs to be moderation in some point for form or fashion uh, for a while i was i was helping out with the insider program where they would they would send uh, uh uh surveys about how the content is online and how people are communicating and frankly the minute you find out that my skin color is a certain way all you get is barrages of ridiculous hate so moderation is necessary like you know the that's why the 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 the, the uh, Xbox Live spaces have become so popular instead of Gen Pop, right? People just got sick and tired of get getting teabagged by 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 the twelve year old <laughs> and then dropping all those racial slurs, right? People just got sick and tired of it. But with that comes the pendulum swinging a little too far, right? Uh, uh, this is this is a, a a point like the the article that the Jez wrote really good article it's a point in in, in this yeah. situation but have you heard that they're banning people for taking screenshots of the wrong game like this happens when when yeah. when cyberpunk was a thing you take the wrong screenshot of the wrong situation and it, it automatically now goes to xbox live right back in the day it lived on your console first you decided when to hit the button to bring it to xbox live now it's auto generating to xbox live and the minute it hits xbox live pan am looks good and you banned like that's what's happening like (laughs) without you even doing anything it has happened multiple times right it's not even a game that you know why are you selling it on the store if you're not allowing people to this is the world we live in and that ban thing is not somebody going screw them it's the algorithm it's the robot going oh we see boobs it's over right uh uh the, you know stella yams has no place on xbox you gotta you gotta watch that in secret right because the minute you record something oh boy your whole library is gone right yeah there's a big problem here and, and and it's been a big problem um recently zaslov uh, uh wb 
they decided that it was a better tax write-off to to cancel all their their Nickelodeon network games. And not only did they take them off the shelves, people who have them in their libraries can no longer download them. People who paid for them. Now all of a sudden it's poof, right? This is the world, you know. uh, It's funny, people go, well, you know, Nintendo's for the kids. They're the only store that has hentai on there. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what I'm saying? Like, I was always gonna get to like, that coyote conversation where they they shut down that movie, they deleted it because exactly, no exactly. That's right off. Yeah. To to your point, three bit. I think this is a place where something akin to the ESRB is necessary. Hundred mm. percent. Something akin, not necessarily a regulatory body necessarily, like government driven, but a, a regulatory body that's agreed upon by all manner, like by the gaming industry. These guys are the arbiters. And as such, they keep your rights, your digital rights secure, right? That is necessary here, right? Uh um, like games that that have uh, uh what do you call it? Games that have online components. Right. It's it doesn't take too much work to then say, okay, you no longer have to do a check in once the game is done. Now it's a peer to peer. Now you can make your own servers and go off and do whatever you want to do. Right. But until there's a regulatory body to push them, until there's somebody to say, hey, man, you can't just leave them high and dry. That is their fiduciary duty to keep as much of that money as possible and to keep you screwed. Right. These are the reasons why I say. You know, if you own the game, rip the game from the disc. Find a way of keeping it on your drive. The only way you own it. Some people call it piracy. Keep your receipts. Because when they ask you for it, you have it. But the only way you will keep it, even in Steam, one day they can decide, nope, I'm done, and all your stuff is gone. Yeah, like PT, right? (laughs) No, exactly. Exactly, right? PT, they can say, well, we didn't sell it to you, so we can take it away. Okay. But many games, you have paid your hard-earned dollars a la Destiny, Destiny 2, and they can just yep. go, yep, peace out, right? In this world, there they would like, like uh, it. Th- there would have to be a mandate to say, look, we understand you can no longer keep it on your servers. We understand it's no longer advantageous to do so. So find a way of making the consumer be able to download that and attach it to their software locally, right? They have to be able to retain the value that they paid for. Right. And until someone makes them do that, somebody makes them do that, this stuff will happen constantly. Somebody hits a, a button and accidentally all of your, your, your library is gone. You take the wrong screenshot and uh oh, it's over. Like it's just absolutely nuts. And until we educate the folks and until people say, look, this is not cool anymore, that's a problem. Like this is why, like I have consoles since I've been collecting, you know. I have old school consoles all the way up. This is why I, whenever the gen ends, I make sure I chip, mod, hack my way through every single one of their rights access because I don't want the day to come where I turn on my 360 and they go, too bad, right? I want, I bought that thing. It's mine. I own it. Now, yep. I won't do that when they're currently in the mix because then they could ban you and they'd have a right reason to do so because they don't want you to modify their stuff. But the minute they take their hands off of it, they should then also release an update that says you now own that device it is your mm-hmm. device you don't have to be beholden to us anymore until someone forces them to do that it takes us to do a little bit of this and a little bit of that to keep it alive it's not cool we need to have that fixed i agree with you you know yeah facts and uh, arthur one he, he did put a uh comment in the chat where he said xbox digital rerun policy is very good though every digital game i returned microsoft has approved i will agree with that like yes in, yes in, yes in terms yeah, of like they're, they're, my sony yeah. games my yeah. playstation games none of them i was able to read yeah. um, nope, once nope. you download uh, yours d- during you the time of cyberpunk if you returned the game right after you play if you returned after you hit the download button if it's on your drive and you return the game they would not let you return it. And then uh, I know some people tried to, they went on the, to their credit card companies and put a block on it so that they got the money back. And then they banned your account until yep. you paid for it again. <laughs> so, yep. right? They, they All are the brutal. power is in the hands of the Cravens. Like, what are we yep. doing here? There needs to be a third yeah. party body that says, nah, man, you can't treat people like that. It sucks. Yeah. And PTK, you're, you're going to say something. No, no, no. I, I 100% agree. That's crazy. You know, 100% agree with that. Like that's that is that is insane, man. That you that you see things uh, happen like that, man. But you're right. There has to be some type. Of, it's almost 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 like a union of some sort, right? 
like um a exactly. union of, of of gamers rights mm-hmm. i don't know how they will put that together yeah. like you said mm-hmm. you know hopefully it wouldn't be too politically driven because that's always messy you'd have yeah. to have mm-hmm. a little bit of politics in it to make it official right yeah uh, so people could listen but, but, but the esrb exists right yeah we all yeah. agree that m for mature and at 16 and that exists yeah. and everybody adheres to it something like that i think would be well yeah. ah, but what do you think yeah. ptk no, I 100 percent agree. I, obviously, it would, like you said, it will be appointed by some some either body of elected officials in the in the game. Maybe I don't know. Maybe you grab 12 CEOs, or I, I don't know how you would vote this in. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, yep. like you said, I think that's a great idea. If they could put that together, that's that's something that needs to be done because you said it's not it it's not fair that people are prey to al- just an algorithm. You know what I mean? That's a bit insane. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? So it's yeah. it's predatory, you know what I mean, in every sense of the word. And I'm I'm never for any of that, man. So yeah, I, I love that idea. I never really considered that, Asante. That um, and that I think that that's also a, a, a fair balance. I don't think that's asking them to, to do anything um that's gonna stress them too thin. Yeah. That, that's fair, creating something that's already we already have an example, like you said, the ESRB. So I think that's fair. I yeah, like that. and, and it does get into a tricky area because the reason why a lot of games do shut down are um, if it's online, like the servers, they can't support the servers yeah, anymore. Yeah. So it, it 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 needs some stipulations, but at the same time, like I I had a game I played, like Scott Pilgrim, for example. Uh, it was on the 360. One of the greatest games ever. Love that game, right? <laughs> um, I was about to uh, get the achievement to play it, uh, beat the game with all characters. I had one character mm-hmm. left. They took it off uh it, the license it was like licensing issues with universal mm-hmm. i think which had the rights to that game and, uh, and i was like dang i can't complete this game they took it off my library i couldn't play it anymore and mm-hmm. then eventually it, like years years later they they did after that such an outcry after people took it to twitter many many years i remember that yep. day when it happened yep. you and i were both walking the streets in championship it was great. Like, Come on. <laughs> and, and then of course i bought it on every system i bought it on switch i bought it on pc i bought it on console y'all ain't taking yep. it away from me <laughs> yep. yeah i'm like i'm ready this time you try to take it away I got <laughs> <it on> everything. <laughs> so so fuzzy what, what do you think so jez he, he had a lot of different points and we're all kind of hinting on uh, uh like the the um you not owning your rights yeah you need to have some sort of uh maybe governing body or someone sort of get involved there uh and then it talks about like the you know the content creators um uh you know not having that sort of protection there what what, what do you think uh about this topic well I'll, I'll start with the the moderation aspect on the console when it comes to accounts and stuff like that like they, they've switched it to more of like an uh algorithm uh, or using AI to kind of sort through the stuff because it's hard to have the amount of human staff go through each and every conversation or each and every post or each and every, you know, thing that you do on the console or that might be reported by other individuals, whether it be for nefarious reasons or valid reasons, it, it would be hard to have the, the, you know, human interaction to go through all of that. That being said, some things need to be looked at on certain games. Like if, if, and I'm, I'm not sure exactly what the reference for free company was within the game. Yeah. Or I have no idea what that that's, means. That's pertinent to the game, but if it is something pertinent to the game, but then in some other regions that might mean something explicit or whatever the case may be, then they need to figure out a way where it it's not, you know, flagged in this particular game, but might be flagged in another situation. Or if this is a M for mature game or something like that, as opposed to a E for everybody game, then maybe, you know, have have the AI dial it back on the higher rated games versus the everybody games. Uh, just because there are going to be certain terms, like you, you'll hear terms be re- uh, purposed each uh each year to some extent where it might be oh it's a new saying like a perfect example pause used to be the saying now new did uh no diddy is the <laughs> saying so it's like th- it's going to be hard for the ai to keep up on things like that so it, it's it's definitely something that's going to uh be a i guess troublesome to some extent moving forward but there there needs to be whoever's in charge of watching over the AI as far as, you know, dialing up or dialing back some of the Mm -hmm. restrictions, they're going to have to stay on top of that stuff. And that's where 
whatever human interaction that they've, you know, laid off from like their previous customer service, they, they might need to bring some of them back to kind of be uh, in charge of the AI as opposed to the AI being in charge of the whole thing, kind of like hands-free, but yeah, aside no from Skynet. the moderation, <laughs> <laughs> aside from the moderation stuff, like the, the big thing, and, and I, this is, and I'm probably the oddball here. Like when I heard NFTs way back when, the first thing that came to mind for me where it's like, oh, digital rights or digital ownership of something. And and they were always trying to play it off as like, oh, you can buy this skin in this game and you'll be able to use it in other games. And right then I knew that was BS because mm -hmm. studios don't work together like that. Like you, they barely work within their own companies together sometimes. So getting some company to say, oh, that gun skin is going to be usable in my game. No, that that's not going to happen. But if it's Point it to that actual app or that actual game that you purchased, that being yours, and I can either pass it on to my kids or I can sell it to my friends or or loan it or uh, like, you know, let them try it out and see if they're interested in the game kind of thing. Almost like what the whole 2013 uh, DRM stuff would have been with, with Microsoft. Mm -hmm. If that's what NFTs were going to be, I'd be all for it. But of course, you know, the greedy people that are talk or pushing NFTs are trying to get it to mean something totally different. But Mm -hmm. I would want it to be where that's like your your digital ownership that once you buy it, you could either sell it, trade it, pass yeah. it on to family, uh, do whatever you want to it. Now, the the restrictions, once again, back to the moderation, as long as you're not, you know, causing harm mentally or emotionally to others. You know, at, at that point, I wouldn't necessarily say it's just start off with a permanent ban, but maybe your interactions restricted to only those that accepted your friend requests or only those that you're in a party with. Yeah. You you might be like permanently muted in lobbies yeah. at that point if you have you know violated so many you know uh, you know time frames or whatever type of deal. But you would still be able to game. You would still be able to have access to your friends and the software you paid for. But then if you keep on being a detriment or, or, or a, 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 a bothersome person to others where you're griefing them above and beyond, then maybe that's where they, they go with the permanent ban or something like that. But there needs to be uh, different elevated levels on that. But on the, the rights of the, the digital software, I'm surprised that there hasn't been like the EU is pretty good as far as consumer protection. Australia is another country where it's it's mm -hmm. they're great at consumer protection because they're always fighting Sony on stuff in the store and where they're overcharging customers. And I think they even have a special uh, uh, exception for the refund or return policy in Australia that none of the rest of the world has with PlayStation. Yep where they can actually you can actually get a refund from PlayStation over there because they protect their consumers. Unfortunately, the US they protect the corporations, <laughs> but yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh that, that's yeah. something that we definitely need to, you know, I guess push more for whether it's talk to the politicians or, you know, write to them. I, I know that's an old concept and most mm -hmm. of them probably have their interns look at it and throw it away or whatever, but in in any event, we need to be more mindful of these government bodies that are existing now in the sense that maybe this should be something brought up. And like when the FTC is chasing after Microsoft over ABK, Hey, what about, you know, digital rights on software? Don't, don't focus mm. on them merging, focus on that. The should have, that, that would have been a better case. Like man, they focus on all these think? things. <laughs> don't you think <laughs> way yeah, better like, case? Yeah. yeah. Then they lost and spent more money trying to bring the case back up. Exactly. Yeah. Like you're, you're yeah. wasting time and money when there's, more like low hanging fruit is the saying I always say. It's like the low hanging fruit is make sure we own these digital movies or songs or or games that we purchase, and that the companies can't come back and say, "Oh, well, we don't feel like re upping the licensing with this company, so you lose it." No, that that shouldn't even be a question. Like it would be almost like you buying a car and it'd be like, you know what? Uh, we don't we don't have the contract with Goodyear anymore, so we're taking the whole car back. No, that that's not. They, they would never be able to get away with that. So why are they able to get away with it with digital stuff? So it's, it's, I don't know what the solution in it is as far, as far as us as a community, you know, uniting and, and making this voice heard type of thing, but it, we, we definitely need to put more attention into it. I guess the less, less of the infighting or less of the console warring and, and, and focus on like that common goal to make sure we can refund our games, make sure we own our games 
make sure when the server shut down, at least we have like an offline mode. Uh, if we paid for content, maybe we can't play it on the server, but we can play it privately in, in like private matches or whatever. Cause like that whole destiny vault thing turned me Crazy. off. From, like I, I, Crazy. I think yeah. after they put yeah. in game pass, I spent like, 70 on two seasons things or two DLCs. Probably the witch and it's like queen. those it were the witch queen. like one of the first ones they put in the vault. Mm -hmm. I was like, uh, ah, I'm not I'm not giving them any more money. Like that that's a scam. That that's a scam. If that was ever a scam, that's a scam to me. Oh, yeah. you know, we we just sold you this like two or three months ago. Oh, and then another two or three months we're gonna put it in the vault and you you will eventually get it back, you know, at some point kind of thing. Like, no, that should not be allowed. But no, the the whole Digital rights, that needs to be a bigger factor. The moderation stuff, I, I really wish they had a better way of um, having more eyes on it. I mean, if it means you have more Xbox ambassadors kind of intervene, I I would rather have that than have no human interaction to be able to say, hey, this is because of a term that's in the game that I said or I typed or whatever, and I got banned, not realizing that, you know, in this region, it means something totally different type of thing. Um, there, there needs to be leeway. Like, I've, I've had this argument with, um, what do you call it, with uh, uh, Playground and, and Forza Horizon. I had a paint scheme based off of uh, Steve, McQ was it Steve McQueen's Bullet uh, Mustang. Bullet was banned, and I guess Queen, for whatever reason, was a banned term. So every time I'd put it there, it'd be like, oh, you used a, a term that's uh, prohibitive or something. I'm like, what in the world is going to be prohibitive? When when you actually show the car in green, it, it should be like, oh, well, that's Steve McQueen's Bullet Mustang. It's like, wh why would that even be, you know, and it's because Bullet those words separately can be used. In in, in yeah. odd ways, yeah. Yeah. this is yeah. this is the immaturity of the algorithm that's just on yeah. display right now, right? Absolutely, exactly. sir. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, I mean the middle finger Crazy. in Japan means like brother, right? Mm. <laughs> so <laughs> just that's, that's one example uh, how it can mean different things in different places. Yeah, but that's that's I guess where we're at now. Like it, I'm I'm all for AI in other areas, but. There needs to be more human eyes on what the AI is, or, or at least better training of the AI through human intervention for certain mm. keyword terms, or at least when, hey, we're banning a bunch of people over this word. Are we sure that that's something that the AI is doing properly? Like, I, I would understand if you're talking about bullets in the first person shooter, but we're banning it in a racing game. Oh, but it's not even spelled the same way. And oh, well, there's a car that was called the bullet. Oh, well, mm -hmm. yeah, let, let's let's take that off the flag list right now as far as band accounts and restore these and apologize. Hey, sorry, you know, the AI, mm -hmm. you know, banned you temporarily or, or banned your, your paint scheme or whatever type of thing and, and move forward. But th there needs to be a, a learning process and a, re a better review process or a better uh, support process as far as when people feel that they've been erroneously or or, you know, hit by the AI not understanding the term within that game versus the term used elsewhere kind of thing. So for that, sure. That's all I got. And and Apple and and Epic the Epic case, people should really just keep looking into that because I believe that that could hint <laughs> to where our future is going, where um stores start opening up. Uh Apple has mm -hmm. for a long time have had a stronghold on um games or, or, or even xbox has talked about it for years right like not being able to fully do game pass on apple's store because mm -hmm. of how it works they they want you be you do, to be able to play all games on game pass but you have to download it like separately and buy it through their store Literally, which is, yeah. defeats the purpose of game pass <laughs> like mm -hmm. you just play you, yeah. you click on game pass you can play the games but they want you to be able to like no every single game you should download buy it uh, which I'm like, what, what's the point? And, and the key was they had an exception for places like Netflix. They didn't make Netflix mm -hmm. have it where you had to download each movie. So that mm -hmm. that was where Apple bowed to Netflix, but was like, oh, screw Microsoft. <laughs> well, this, this hmm. wasn't a bow to Netflix. This was a Netflix has is doing something different. If we let them do this, why will they go to Apple Arcade? Yeah, true, true. That's literally what this is, right? It, this is a <laughs> we're not trying to let them 
get get competition against us in our store, which is yeah. really craven when you own the store. Yeah. Kind of crazy, you know. Yeah, super crazy. Uh, let, let's get into our last topic. So this one is uh, Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, might, might get a little little fanboy here. We'll, we'll see. Um, <laughs> we'll see where this conversation leads. So Microsoft started releasing f- their, was it, four games on other platforms. Mm-hmm. It was Sea of Thieves, Hi-Fi Rush, Pentiment, and shoot, what was, what was the last one? It grounded. was uh, Grounded. Uh, Ground, um, grounded. Grounded, 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 Grounded. grounded. Yeah. So um recently digital foundry released a video of hi-fi rush where they started comparing mm. different things um the, the performance the the texture detail and oh the, man i see where you're going you're gonna make yep. people hate me on this one. Oh <laughs> lord here we go okay <laughs> so <laughs> another thing they compared was the shadow detail uh-huh. so mm-hmm. um the shadow detail on actually both the pc and the xbox uh, from what I could tell, um, mm-hmm. are of lower quality um, on the Xbox and the PC compared to the PS5. So this has mm-hmm. this has gotten to a lot of different conversations where a lot of uh, Xbox uh, centric people are saying like we feel like second class citizens. <laughs> um, it's gotten to the conversation. Off huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. It's gotten to a lot of different conversations because because. You know, uh, a lot of people are saying like Xbox only feels like patching games when they deliver it to other consoles. Like, oh, I put on the PlayStation. Now I'm going to update the game or with Grounded, like um, I'm putting on on the PlayStation. Now I'm going to release an update for it. So it's, you know, I, I feel like there there could be some some truth to that. Um, my whole thing with with Hi-Fi Rush is when I'm playing a game, uh, I'm probably not going to notice the, sh- the shadow, the what they what they specifically pointed out. Yeah. However, it, it's not a good look in my opinion. I, I don't think it's a good look when you, uh, if you are um, Microsoft and you're saying like Series X, the most powerful console. Here are my studios. I own these studios. I'm going to use these studios to leverage my box. That's why I'm buying them. Uh, you talk about all these different tools that the Xbox has within the console. Mm-hmm. So it's not a good look when you when you put a, an Xbox centric game on another console and it just has slightly different, like better textures here or there, better performance here and there. Um, so that that's my view on it. Like again, if I'm playing Hi-Fi Rush, I'm I'm not I'm probably not gonna be staring You're at the pixel floor. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm not gonna be like yeah. like with magnifying like oh that's yeah. different. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not gonna yes. do that, right? But yeah. I'm mm-hmm. just talking about in in general. Yeah. It's it's not a good look, I don't think. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm gonna bring it to you guys. What what it gets to a lot of different conversation? But okay, Asante, I'll bring it to you first. Oh what do you think? boy, what do you think, man? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> please direct the the digital tomatoes my way. I get it. It's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, there are two places here. If you are a consumer and you are expecting the best of the best from this this company that's now considered your first party, these are the first party offerings and you're hearing this, 100%. From a consumer perspective, you get no argument from me. And even, even the other ones, there, this is not me arguing. This is me providing the context. As you, probably more than I know, development's a layer cake. It, it starts at the bottom and they just keep piling on top. And it's a seven, five, six, seven year process layer cake, right? So every time you're adding on top, right? At this point, most of these games we're talking about, all of these games we're talking about, started their layer cake process as third parties, right? That's what they did. And when you start as third parties, what do you as a business owner focus on? the biggest pool where most of the people will play your games. Now, what so happens is that that biggest pool develops in a completely opposite way from the other guy that just bought you five minutes ago. So I've said it before, I'll say it again, and people hate it when I do. You're playing a PS5 game. I don't care if it came out five years ago and then you get it on PS5 now. You're playing a PS5 game. It started as a PS5. It it was earmarked as a PS5. It was 
PS5 and then we'll port to the other guys. That's why it doesn't run or look as good on my 4090 as it does on the PS5 because it was never focused on it. It was, they always focus on the biggest pool, right? And until Microsoft aligns their development process to the biggest pool, which frankly, I don't think they should. I think education is what mm -hmm. matters here, right? right. Mm -hmm. but, uh, but as long as they do that, you will never get a product that uses the, 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 the system to its most effectiveness, right? And every time they go, but they're first party. They've been first party relatively five minutes ago. What do they do? Throw the five, the five six year layer cake away and start from scratch using mesh shaders because now they have access to it? No, right? They patch it up and they keep it moving, right? That's what's happening. Uh, Starfield PS5 game, uh, avowed PS5 game. Uh, like I, I can go down the line. Uh, to my understanding, the only non PS5 game that I'm looking out for, looking for right now that that I hope comes out and blows people away, Hellblade Two. Only non PS5 game that I think is around right now. Right. Every other game you've played up until now was in development, including Hi-Fi Rush. It was done pristine bing, and sitting there for a year until they decided to bring it out now and now it looks better than the other guy why do you think that is because it was built for the other guy first that's yeah. why yeah i, I was right, a, so. i was a a part of the team that was creating mm -hmm. the dev direct and yeah. when we launched uh hi-fi rush as a, a part of the the trailers i was like oh this game mm -hmm. is looking good it's looking good mm -hmm. but this is that something i've been talking about for a while also ks on where a lot of developers develop for the PlayStation first, and then they, and they then port. port it. They port it That's to right. the Xbox. And, and now, yep, yep. What's, what's exciting, though, about the PS5 mm -hmm. Pro is now they're talking about interesting, smart tools that can leverage different aspects, the cores that can then be used for ray tracing and all of this. They're talking about smart development. And in that world, hopefully then, the process is somewhat similar. And guess what? Who benefits? The Xbox. So that all those tools that go dormant now have a potential to be used because the biggest pool also uses similar tools, right? But again, again, all this is basically water under the bridge. It's like people complaining about Square not putting their games elsewhere. They're going to put their games elsewhere. They just had to wait until all the contracts ended here, right? So you can complain now, but the next games are not built for PlayStation. They're built as part of the first party, right? Uh, uh, um, um, what do you call it? South of Midnight, built for Xbox, right? But there are very few games coming out now that you know weren't being built for Xbox, weren't being built for PlayStation when they were purchased, right? So whether you like it or not, you know, you're playing PS5 games that have been ported. That's why it will always run like crap in comparison. Now, again, when I say that, it's not like, oh my God, this thing is garbage, get it out of here. But I will contend that in a world where Starfield started under Microsoft, it would run at 60 frames. It would, on the Series S. Yeah. It yeah. would, because those, those devices have tools to offset all of the gen pop losses that the Series S would have but you have to use them from the beginning of the layer cake. If you're four years into a six-year development cycle, there's no way you're going to go back and go, okay. Now I talk about development all pipelines all the time, like how important it is if you do not optimize your game in the beginning of the process and you're like, let me just use these tools afterwards. Yep. It's, it's the most important work. decision you make. What's your target, right? Uh, uh, a quick example. Um, I, I've been recently on my, on my PC, I've been playing, uh, uh, um, uh, what do you call it? Horizon Forbidden West, the complete edition, because it came out on PC, and uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Dragon's Dogma 2, right? If you compare the two, if you are just a person who just loves to watch the cool whiz bang, man, Horizon is the greatest looking game ever. Like ever, 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 ever. I've never seen like quality graphics look so good on a screen. Wipe all that away. Do you know what you have? A simplistic game that you've played over and over and over and over again, right? Because the target was the PS4, not even the PS4 Pro, the PS4 Jaguar Core toaster, if you will, right? So if, if, if your eyes only want to be titillated by the speeds and feeds, yeah, they can dial that up for you forever, right? But next gen real is Dragon's Dogma 2. Yeah. Where, uh, well, I was saying, like, I think I was saying it today on Iron Lords, 
where while you're doing battle and you've you've spent all this time gathering your resources, yet yeah, those apples in your inventory are slowly rotting. Mm-hmm. Right? And the CPU is accounting for all of that. And then a boulder comes from nowhere and the physics smacks you in the face. And then there's a freaking griffin five miles away and he jumps on top of you. And all of that is happening in real time and it's yeah. beating your CPU to a pulp. That mm-hmm. is the difference here, right? You know, it, it, people must understand the, 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 the logistics in the back and forth of it. Unfortunately, that's the world we live in. So if you want to develop for that hardware, being the Xbox, you must develop for that hardware. You can't just throw something at it and expect it to go, yeah, it'll be fine. Yes, it will, because we have great developers doing great work, but you will never see the full actual capacity and capability of it unless it was built from the ground up for it. Right, facts. And I, I, another point I bring up with the PlayStation 5 is they put all that power into the SSD, and games can't even <laughs> fully utilize that because yep. oh if, if, oh yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you're uh, gonna build uh, the, a game from the ground up for the ssd mm-hmm. it, you know then that game can't go and anywhere by the way, else, so the software part right you know how microsoft created the the, the compression blocks that's supposed to make makes it it's supposed to push the the power of the ssd a little further for them even though they didn't have raw throughput yeah in lab environments their software iteration, their compression ratios go faster than the physical power that the PS5 can do now. So even like for like, when they use each of them fully, the Xbox One goes faster. But you'll never ever see that because no one will ever use it. And and as a technologist, where I get mad is, yeah, God damn it, that tree fell in the woods. We didn't see it, but it still freaking fell, okay? It did. You can call it marketing all you want. There's still a tree, it still fell. God forbid one day we see it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I, I do hope that we, we start seeing more de- devs because that that always annoys me. Like you, they have all these mm. uh, all this tech in the box, and we haven't seen a game use it yet. But Hellblade could be that first uh, yeah, stepping stone. Definitely. So but we'll see. So, so PTK, <laughs> what what? So getting into the topic, of Hi-Fi Rush. Uh, what do you think about a game like Hi-Fi Rush being ported to uh, PS5 aye, aye, aye. and and possibly looking better what, what do you think i mean that's that's interesting to me because like you said i'm i just play these games but I, I could care less you guys know how i am about any of this stuff um it, it i think that the timing is interesting of all this we got to look at we got to look at that too i think that's that's more prominent than actually the game itself is when all of this stuff pops up and it's interesting um because ultimately like whose experiences is that changing i mean at the time when hi-fi rush came out when it was only on Xbox at that point in time, did I, I did not see a single person complaining about the way the game looked. I didn't see anybody complaining about the way the game played. Matter of fact, more people were highlighting um, those aspects of the game. That, it got a lot of kudos based on those aspects. It won a lot of awards based on those same aspects. So I understand, you know, and like I said, from a technological standpoint, Kiyosante, um, I get what you're saying. You know, those games probably were made uh, for the... the um, the larger piece of the pie, go to speak, you know, when it comes to PlayStation, um, you know, being the, the larger uh, consumer base. So, um, but ultimately I, I don't think that changes what the game is as its core. I don't think that changes anybody that's played the game. I don't think that changes, um, you know, retroactively how you should feel about the game. You know, ultimately um, that's going to happen from time to time, man. That is unfortunate. It is not a great look, you know, and I can understand that too. You got, we got to look at both sides of the coin. Um, ultimately, especially when you've kind of started the gen and you've kind of taken that power crown and you've kind of touted that as kind of your thing, right? That's one thing that Xbox could stand on for uh, the last few years was that, hey, you know, we got the better box, so to speak, from a hardware standpoint. So there's always, that's always been a weird thing for Xbox too. They've always had a hard time balancing that three bit, wouldn't you say? Mm. Um, <laughs> they, <Yeah. laughs> it's weird, man. Like I, they, I, they definitively took it back. Like there's no like on 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 paper. Like you can do all the calculations. Everything says you know these are this is a. But they've always had a hard time like actually wearing that crown. Mm, um. Yeah. And I. And it's it's such a weird and it should it really shouldn't be. So they've kind of if you look at it from that standpoint, Xbox hasn't done themselves any favors mm-hmm. uh, in that regard because there's a lot of self inflicted wounds there. I mean, you've had some games come along. Um. And you know you're just like ah that's not really. 
that's not really pushing, you know, the agenda, mm -hmm. you know, kind of what you guys, this, this is the idea that you guys put out there. This is the image you guys created. So they haven't done themselves any favors and they don't, obviously people aren't going to give them any grace in these type of instances, right? They're, yeah. they're not going to get the level of grace that a Nintendo would get and or a PlayStation would get in these instances. So we do got to take that into account. They're not going to get a favorable um, look um, in these instances as well, too, because like you said, it's not a vacuum, right? Um, these things are all looked at comparatively. So um, ultimately for me, I could care less. Is it going to happen again? Maybe it happens again down the line, right? You know, some people are speculating these aren't going to be the only four games that go to PlayStation. So maybe we'll have this conversation again, three bit, right? Like, I don't know. <laughs> right. I don't know. You know, sooner or later, maybe we will. And that's going to be interesting. Um, maybe sea of Thieves don't... will be interesting because that one they actually built for PlayStation. Or... Microsoft did. Right. That's the first time. This is the Sea of Thieves is completely different than the others because there was yeah. that was built part and parcel for the Xbox and then they ported it to PlayStation. That is unique among all these others. All yeah. these others had a PlayStation code from jump, except for this one. So this yeah. one will be super interesting to see with the digital yeah. foundry uh, lens. You know, we shall yeah, see. Yeah, it would be interesting <laughs> to see what they do with, with Sea of Thieves because the tech in Sea of Thieves is also very impressive really cool. like yeah, with it's really cool. everyone seeing yeah. the same waves at the same time on s in the server and stuff like that but yeah go ahead go ahead pta if you had um, no you're good no you're good bro now i i understand you know like i said it's it's always a um you know it's always a double-sided argument you know and you can't ignore the obvious things like you know does this make xbox you know look a bit hypocritical it does you know what i mean you can have that conversation i'm okay with mm -hmm. that you know, we, we it's it's healthy to have those conversations because you got to be honest at the end of the day. If you put the narrative out there, you got to stand on business. So, you know, at the end of the day, if you if the things you do don't fit that, you know, it's OK for people to call those out and question it. But oh, yeah. do I think it ultimately damages the brand? No, 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 like, no, not at all. You know, everybody just played um, Hi-Fi Rush, you know, at this point in time, I think we've mo majority of us. Matter of fact, I'd say probably 90 percent of us you know enjoyed the game it was a phenomenal game the game is beautiful it runs well um right out the gate you know what i mean one of the best looking games i've seen the unique art style um and i think it's gotten credit for all of that so you know, to go back retroactively and say well but it still performs better on the ps5 and <laughs> it won it won all those art direction awards already Hey, you know what I mean? even, like, even Pentiment performs better on the PS5. Yeah, like, there you on, go. You know what I, mean? <laughs> I mean, it is what it is at the end of the day. You know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think ultimately that should change, you know, anybody's experience. But the, you can have the conversation. That's fair. Yeah. I'm, I'm all yeah. up for that, too, because you do have to have the healthy conversations, you know, in yeah. regards to the 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 agenda, you know, that Xbox set forth, the idea, you know, the, the identity that they want to put out there for the Xbox Series X being the most powerful console. So that, that's fair as well, too. I'll say, like, me being in the industry, like, uh, working for these different companies, I, I always said, like, with, like, Ubisoft and Xbox and, and different companies, they definitely prioritize PlayStation in a, a majority of ways. Like, when even when it comes down to reviews, uh, you'll have... 100 review copies for the playstation and like 10 for the xbox you can just go on metacritic search for like a bunch of different games unless everyone it's says it all the time don't even yep. look at the review scores look at the review amount like yes 20 <laughs> to 300 it's just nuts that's yes. that's all, all you need time. and it's mm -hmm. it comes down to marketing power in a lot of these cases with uh, if you are a third uh party company and you are developing a game and you're looking at the playstation playstation you're looking at the xbox most likely you're going to go to the bigger market which is playstation yeah. so you make a yeah. playstation version and then you port it to xbox which is why you get so much disparity like some some games will perform how it's supposed to on xbox like it performs better because on paper mm -hmm. series x is supposed to be the more powerful console right that's yeah. just that's yeah. just how it is but what you keep mm -hmm. seeing is like xbox will perform better in certain games PlayStation performs better in, in other games. And that's just because yep. they're making a PlayStation version and they port it to the Xbox. Now, to Kay Asante's yep. point, they are definitely uh, cases where uh, Xbox bought the company and you're like, oh, well, stop making a PlayStation version. Let's get to the Xbox version. And if mm -hmm. you aren't, um, in terms of optimization, if you are not prioritizing optimization from the beginning of your pipeline and you're just choosing later to put in features that's supposed to be built for the box, you're not mm -hmm. going to get 
the optimization you think you are going to get. And unfortunately, a lot of games nowadays are, let's put in all the features, we'll put in ray tracing, all the stuff in Unreal Engine 5, and then I'll optimize the game. Um, and we are look seeing... At the, look at the, uh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to cut yeah. you real quick. Uh, look at the uh, Alan Wake 2, for example, right? They put in primitive shaders from Jump. Right, and since they did that, they did um, they did mesh shaders from Jump, and then put in primitive shaders for the for the PlayStation. PlayStation looks great, runs great. Xbox looks and runs better because they use the tools that were available for the box from Jump. And in the rare instance they do that, hey, it actually performs better. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, uh, real to your point, Fuzzy, about uh, about their, the uh, oh, actually, I think it was PTK. They don't do themselves any favor. Look at Forza Horizon, Forza Motorsport. Right. There's no third party there. There's nothing. But of course, yeah. there's always a well actually there. Well, they decided to to target the Xbox One. So the minute you do that, you will never be able to use these yeah. other big features. But who yeah. cares, consumer? It still looks bad. It's just, you know, yeah. mud in their eye. What are you gonna do? You know. Yeah, that, that's just the 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 tools that <laughs> Delilah HD shout out. Uh, I believe she works for for Microsoft. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it's just. Mm-hmm. It, unfortunately that's just how it is if you don't if you are making a game and you are just like if you're in the beginning like we're making this for the series x let's use x y and z tools then cool when the game comes out it, that game will probably be very optimized for the series x but if you later on are like now i'm gonna make it for the series x and you probably are not gonna get the the performance that you are wanting to so uh, i'm gonna put it uh to fuzzy uh, we had a lot of different <laughs> uh, tech talk on this conversation, mm-hmm. uh, but with Hi-Fi Rush, what would you think about that game coming to other platforms and then performing better on set platform? Well, see, it's it's weird for me because much like PTK, I I've just recently played it on my PC and went through yeah. like that area with the the shadow cast from the the fence, and I didn't notice it, or maybe <laughs> maybe the settings on my computer were different. I don't I don't know. I it, it did not appear like what they showed on my PC. Now, mm. I don't have the beast of a PC, but it's a pretty decent one. Um, but I, I run everything at 1440 and then try to turn everything up from there. And it, it runs great. Never had a problem with it. But I'm more focused on trying to get my timing down uh, to stay on beat with some of the, the hits when you're trying to hit certain, some of the buttons or something along those lines. So... I haven't noticed any big issues with it. Um, I think it's one of the few games that came out, uh, was it last year, where I think the only patch they had was like a localization patch, yep. like a, a month or so later. Yep. Um, so it came out polished. And yeah, it, it may have sat on the shelf for for a year or so, but that hey, if all games come out that polished for sitting on the shelf for a year, I, I would say that should be the new standard at this point. <laughs> yeah. But as far as the, the look of a game going to PlayStation, you know, as a consumer, yeah, it doesn't it doesn't look great to know that, hey, we have the most powerful console and the game doesn't run as great as the guys over there that just happen to be lucky enough to get this game. You know, it 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 does ruffle a few feathers, but it's not the end of the world. Um, hopefully it doesn't continue. I'm speaking to what the like, K Asante made mention on, on like uh, Forza Motorsport. That's the one I'm, I would say I'm more disappointed in, not in the game as a whole, but in the condition that it released in um, mm-hmm. just for the fact that, yeah, I know they were on a really big crunch schedule uh, trying to get a lot of the tracks and things done. But there were like some of the same mistakes that were early on in like let's say Motorsport Seven that carried over. Like they had patched out of Motorsport Seven years ago, and the exact same ones appeared day one in in the newest Motorsport. It's almost like when I used to do website stuff, and we go to push an update, and somehow somebody clicked the box for the folder that had the old code up there, and they pushed that out there, and it's like, oh, we got to make sure we're all working on the same right dev site and, and don't push out old content or old, you know, page links and things like that. that will wind up either being broken or having to, you know, re push the whole site out again with the corrections and stuff. And it, it just feels like that was a missed opportunity on the team, but I'm not as worried about it, but yeah, it, it doesn't look good in, in the eyes as far as from a consumer standpoint, but 
if we focus on every time something like this happens, then we'll never mm-hmm. get to enjoy the games mm-hmm. <laughs> in the grand Ooh, scheme. Things. Say that for us. Um, I mean, there, there's been other instances where, much like you guys have said, there have been games that run better on the Xbox that were multi-plat in comparison to PlayStation, where it seems like Capcom seems to focus more so on Xbox than it does PlayStation because almost every last one of their games seem to run better on Xbox. And that's been the case for the past two generations. Um, But I don't see many people talking about that. Um, And if I'm not mistaken, after we we got Deathloop, I could have sworn after they fixed the FSR patch because it messed it up for some people. But afterwards, I could have sworn that ran better on Xbox once it came yeah. to Xbox, even though, yes, it was built for PlayStation as being a PlayStation exclusive initially. But that's one that I'm pretty sure if you Gear run power. it today, <laughs> runs better on the Xbox. But yeah, yeah, yeah. nobody. Yeah, talks and I think that. Assassin's Creed Valhalla was another one. I, th- yeah, I believe yeah, was another one. Yep. Where mm-hmm. it ran better on the PlayStation initially, then Xbox got an update and then that thing and ran thing way better. Took off. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yep. They so the, the big thing with that one. Mm-hmm. Well, the, the, with Valhalla, I think that was the one that was melting some of the uh, the chips or having that artifacting. Like when the PlayStation mm-hmm. first came out and everybody was like, what's this? And it was like all these like bright colors and squares and things like that. I think whatever that overclocking that they were doing was uh, a bit too much for, or that game was uh, not optimized for that overclocking or something. But um, yeah, it, it's funny how the attention is on on an Xbox first party. And I understand why, but when the third party stuff runs better on Xbox, it's like, oh, it's a footnote. And or it's like Digital Foundry purposely goes and say, Well, when you go to this town, it all of a sudden stutters and drops <laughs> below 55. And it's like, no. really? But you didn't say that about GT7. I guess I'm the only one that puts paint schemes on the other cars and Daytona is horrid as far as frame drops. But no, Dark Wind mm. or Dark Knight or whatever his name is doesn't want to talk about that. But it is what it is. They but, they can be pretty selective sometimes. With, with some mm-hmm. What they don't tell you though is to this very day, the Series S, not even the X, the Series S has more games that run at 120 frames per second than the PS5 does. If that exists, then there's something else beyond the fact that it's just the toaster. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like it just is what it is. Yeah, it, that got into a, a lot of different people like Reforge calling him out a little bit he was saying like the series s is holding back gaming things like that i'm like yeah all the all the these consoles are nowadays like with x uh 86 architecture and, and things like that x64 and mm-hmm. basically these consoles are just pcs so like if you Absolutely. are making a game for the pc then automatically you're not holding games back because you're building yep. the game for multiple specs already just putting it on the pc mm-hmm. You're building a game for multiple specs. So when you put it on the PC, you put on Xbox, that's already a bunch of different uh, (laughs) variations of that same game. Uh, So when you put on the Series S, all it is is another version of of, of that game. And by the way, on a a PC, you're holding games back by the PC because the lowest common common denominator on a PC (laughs) is so much lower than the Series S. But still, those also get support. So, you know. Yeah, the whole Baldur's Gate thing where it's like, oh, the the series s whatever the the minimum spec of Baldur's gate to my knowledge was lower than the series s so then the series s yes. absolutely so, yes it was mm-hmm. so what is holding back yeah that that conversation was interesting <laughs> interesting to me. I, I could talk about that one all day yeah uh but we're gonna end it here uh let's let's, let's close it out happy easter everybody everybody in chat you guys are awesome you guys had a lot of different conversations going on uh delilah c money Del- doll knight uh j uh rembert he says uh, <laughs> uh everybody hit that like button every yes hit that like button we are brand new brand new channel um i've been wanting to podcast for a while i've been on a bunch of other people's shows been booms fun speculation stuff like that just decided to do do my own uh why not uh fuzzy join me on this journey appreciate you bud and let, let's get these peeps out of here it's, it's, it's sunday go you know go hang out with your fam <laughs> and uh but we love talking gaming so we thought we would have this this episode so yeah kay asante where can people find you uh tell us about your your content bud i first and foremost i appreciate it i'm i'm on the show that that's on it's it's not even of, of drinking age yet and i i gotta be got to be a part of it i appreciate being here this is this is great i expect the show will take off as as 
all of our shows that have you on it do. So appreciate. Th- this is great. I appreciate being here. Anytime you need me back, bro, give, give me the call. I'll be here. It's, it's great talking shop with you guys. Of course, you got the great fuzzy on deck. PTK's <laughs> here. So, of course, it's family every time I'm here. This, this is awesome. So thank you guys so much for having me. It's been fun today. Uh, you can catch me in my stuff. Uh, G- um, we usually have it on Saturday, Saturday mornings, GCP, Gaming Circle Podcast, myself, Everborn Saga. We talk a little tech. We talk. We keep it general gaming. Uh, on Monday nights, myself and John Wolf, we talk more handhelds and and more PC stuff. Right as more and more folks in the console space are joining PCs, you may have some questions. May, you may have some 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 things you want to either uh, 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 educate everyone about or get educated about yourself. I, I, we like to build a community and talk and talk shop there. So come check us out. That's on Monday nights at seven p.m. Thank you guys so much for having me. This has been great, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, it's been fun. I got to uh, jump back on when I can. <laughs> Absolutely. A... Yeah, we'll look forward to having you. Yeah, yeah, that was uh, fun being on that show uh, that one time. Uh, all right, PTK, where, where can people find you, man? Well, first and foremost, like, uh, you know, the great K. Asante said, you know, it's just glad being here, you know, kind of getting in on a ground level, seeing you do your thing, man. It's always cool. I've been doing this for a long time. It's almost nine years now, bro. It's yeah, just crazy, man. but um seeing these new shows pop up with you know the people that i i always envision you getting your own show on my head and actually seeing it come true and you and fuzz doing your thing is super cool so i gotta get my fanboy shit out the way first and foremost <laughs> but uh glad that you guys had me on today man it's cool to be here uh you guys can find me um you know everywhere uh pretty much twitter slash x is gonna be the best place that's ptk blam I'm um, the host of the shop podcast, which takes place on Saturdays, man. You see a lot of these gentlemen here show up there, um, you know, fa- fairly frequently. Um, I'm sure three, but it'll be back as well as Kea Asante soon. That'll yep. be cool. But um, yeah, Saturdays, 6 uh, p.m. AZ time, 9 p.m. EST for now. Hopefully we can get rid of that damn daylight savings time <laughs> so we don't have this issue anymore. <laughs> Good Lord. Right. So, yeah. uh, <laughs> um, but either way, man, just glad to be here. You guys check us out, man. Um, I hopefully I'm back sooner than later as well, too, man, because I love being here. But uh, I'm always glad to do this with some uh, awesome gamers, man. Thank you uh, for, for inviting me. Fuzz, uh, um, <laughs> you guys are awesome, man. Thank you. Yeah. And bro, I, I respect both of you guys. You guys are, are killing it. PTK, you've been like you say, you've been around the, the circuit for a while uh 300 something episodes congrats to you dude uh thank you sir thank you uh like the og the, the og, OG. Uh, don't do that man the great <laughs> great <laughs> great <laughs> definitely an og in the podcast and space yeah, okay thanks, Sanche, right. like whenever you guys uh you and everborn be talking like you guys take it from a perspective that most people should take it or whether it's like it's your personal views it, it it's like tech focus uh but it's a respectful conversation and you know you guys you guys definitely kill it so respect to both you guys uh thank you guys for both joining it really means a lot i mean you know i i, I joined the the podcast space i just jumped on boom show and then he was like hey you become a member and then ever since then this community has been as amazing. did i yeah shout out to boom yeah shout, shout out, out to boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. to, yeah. boom bringing hey, everybody yeah. together oh, yeah. Yeah. boom yeah 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 that's right yeah yeah um so my co-host fuzzy man uh take us home uh where can people find you man oh this this was an awesome episode always a great time when we have ks or anytime i'm on the podcast with ks and ptk is my my brother from another so man yes, it, it's <laughs> it's it's always awesome just having a conversation with him on anything gaming related always love doing this on saturdays on on the shop but you know, doing this tonight was pretty cool as well. And and everybody that came and joined us here in the chat, thank you so much for checking us out. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Greatly appreciate the support. Um, for those that want to hear my rambles and rants on anything gaming related, just follow me on the app, formerly known as Twitter at fuzzy underscore Belvedere. You can find out what uh, podcast I'm on next. I'm going to be on Double Barrel Gaming on Mondays and Friday mornings. Uh, on FSP or Fun Speculations Network on Monday nights and Friday nights, and then on PTK Blam channel for the Shop Podcast on Saturday night, 9 Eastern time on Saturday, and then right back here, 8.30 next Sunday. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, you don't know. I forgot. how <laughs> on some shows, man. Uh, for sure. And I'm also on uh, Fun Speculation. Shout out to Mav. Um, I... 
it's like a family over there. We we've been yeah. podcasting together for a long time. Um, so you know, go check out the fun speculation. I'm there every Monday. Like, shoot, I'll be there tomorrow. So <laughs> go check us out. Fun speculation. If you guys enjoyed uh these conversations, be sure to subscribe. And if you agreed with us or not, let us know in the comment section down below. That's how I end every show. You, there's something I said, you're like, three bit, you're wrong. Say it in the comments. Let's talk about it. You know, let's make this a conversation. Uh, so don't forget to subscribe. Pixelated Echoes. I am 3-Bit signing off, everybody. Have a good one. Bye, y'all.